In this episode of the Waporipedia The Figure Behind the Ink interview series, where we sit down with respected horishi or traditional Japanese tattooers from all across the world, we will be sitting down with Kisaragi II. Kisaragi II is a Germany based horishi who is the second generation of the Japan originating Horikoi Kisaragi family. An incredibly knowledgeable and skilled horishi. Join me as we sit down with Kisaragi II and learn more about the figure behind the eight. Gordon Klaus, Kisaragi II, thank you so much for joining. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. So you, you're based out of Germany, right? Yep. 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 For based sure. out of Germany. Um, yeah. Awesome. So, you know, I'm really excited to have you here for, for many reasons. Obviously, you're... You're a very interesting, interesting man. You have obviously great skill, but that obviously there's a very interesting story in in your background and how you acquired your name of, of Kisaragi the second. We'll talk about that further on, but why don't we start from the beginning you. and you tell us, you know, what's your background and how did you get involved with Wawori? Yeah, well, you know, uh, where do you start with all that, you know? Um, uh, there's a quick version and there's also a, a slow version. So I suppose people are interested because you're channel is like great so let me tap into a little bit of my history uh without getting there too long you know but um i was born and raised i was born in namibia and i was raised in south africa i grew up in johannesburg and i grew up uh in apartheid in the apartheid system um and uh i went to a school that was the first multicultural school in in south africa it was there already in the apartheid and i went there since i was small so um Growing up, you know, there was a there was a difference between black and black and white and white and all sorts of uh, issues about people from all sorts of different races. It's a difficult issue, but the thing is, to be honest, only when you address it, it becomes a problem and everyone else is just a human being. So it's a cool thing and it's about being a good person and that's how we were taught, you know. And we would go to school and we would have to go back on the train. So the people we were getting in trouble with was was white people as well, you know, just from a different language. So it was Afrikaans and English. I went to an English speaking school and we would throw stones and rocks at each other. And sometimes someone would get hit. Right. And so we grew up with like beating each other up, you know, from, I don't want to, it's no bragging. It's like just telling how it is. But the thing is we grew up from being like seven until we were 13. And you know, when you start becoming 13, it starts becoming really, really dangerous and violent. And um, so that was like the thing that I grew up in, you know. And then when I moved to Germany, it was the same thing again. I was addressed with uh, with with fascism again, you know. I was walking down the road with my sister. We were like three weeks old in Germany. We got past the fun fair. Someone thought it would be a good idea to chat my sister up. And well, good old Gordon Klaus, you know, gave that guy a hiding. And all of a sudden I was in a dust cloud with like 13 of his friends. I didn't have any. The guys who picked me out, they were all sort of like rockabilly, psychobilly kind of guys, you know, and they all had tattoos. So I was hanging out with them even before I was actually schooled in. And some of them had like tattoos. So I don't know, you know, it grows on you, you know, and then you're there for a half a year and don't get tattooed. And my parents didn't like it. And all of a sudden I got a dragon on my arm, you know, and little did I know back then that it was an Ed Hardy design, right? So, but it was a Japanese inspired dragon on the arm, right? So that's how it grew, you know. And from then, you know, we were we were getting tattooed and we were getting heavily tattooed. And there was a few guys in the area that really need like mentioning, you know. One of the people in Germany at that time who was going to Chris Garwood, flying to New York, it was really illegal in New York until 1999, yeah. right? So he would meet Chris. He knew them because he was playing in a band. And uh, René Manich, um, he had a studio in Northhausen and uh, he was like one of the first guys we would go and get tattooed. And he was like, already doing like full sleeves and back pieces and he's like wow you know this is like this is the guy you know and um so besides him around in my area because it's the Ruhr area where the river Ruhr goes through goes into the river rhine it's really dense populated area so we've got like eight million people in an 80 mile circumference it's quite a lot and it's I multicultural mean. a lot of stuff going on it's very interesting you know you can go to a thai restaurant and to a mexican restaurant and it's good fun, you know, if you live in other areas of Germany, it's practically just fries, you know. Yes. The, 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 the taking out culture is dying here in Germany, right? So, um, and in that area of Düsseldorf near Cologne, right, it's like the, the middle of, it, it's already Rhineland. There was a guy called Ralf Guttermann, right? And Ralf Guttermann, 
he was also doing it already for so long. Like he was also an institution. And this guy somehow really liked me a lot, you know. And he was he was like an old biker and he was doing Japanese tattoos. And he went to uh, visit Japan in 1992 or 1997 already, you know. Like he was there 20 years before me. And before things happened, Ralph, you know, he, 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 he got cancer and he died, you know. And uh, that was really unfortunate, you know. And so... I wrote to Horikoi because I knew that he had been at Horikoi and at Third Carver Generation Yokohama, and uh, I heard from someone that um, that Sensei was like he was like sick. So I wrote to I wrote to Sensei, you know, and I said like, um, it's unfortunate. I have to inform you that that uh, Ralph's not 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 there anymore. You right? So it was, and he was like, oh, that's that's unfortunate. You know, I I, I have the same, and I'm like, yeah, I've, I've I've heard about it, and he's like, well, you know, if you have time, then. Then come visit me in Japan. I said, like, I'll come immediately. And he said, like, well, if time permits, you're welcome. And I didn't really actually realize what he meant with if time permits, you're really welcome, because um he he meant that he was he, he time waits for no man, you know. If you want to do something, you better do it right now, right? So I booked that flight and I flew in, you know, and I met him and uh, he said to me, like, you're a really, really brave man that you're here, man. You know, um, and I was like, why is that? And he's like, well, back in the days, one second or two seconds would decide between life and death, you know. And I mean, they have all their uh, past and, you know, they were all like doing their stuff, you know. So <laughs> I I was like, immediately I was like, and here you are <laughs> in the, you know, in, in the, in the heart of madness or whatever, you know, like this is the real deal, you know, and it was, <laughs> it was, it was great, you know. So that's how I, how I got into being with Sensei, you know, it was like, yeah. Awesome. And then just continuing on that vein, how, what, what can you tell us, what can you share about your time with, with the master? Yeah. Well, the first thing that everyone wants to hear is that he was really strict. Like, I mean, I should not be smiling when I'm saying this. Like he was, he was, I would say like, I love my own father, but he was like a father figure, but like a, a different kind of father figure. He was a, a wise old owl, he was, man, he was just an amazing guy. Like, I don't think I've ever met anybody in my life who was like that. Like, I've met super, super good personalities. But this man was like, for him, it was all about being a good person. So, of course, being, um, Sensei had his past, so he had all these rules that he lived by. But it wasn't like rules. It was like, a good person should go to karate. So... The first thing I did is I went to karate classes with Sensei. Brilliant. And he practically said to me, It's enjoyable. Give me please forward me the number of the of the of the membership you will be training with when you're in Germany. I would like to meet them, you know. And so I had to go and do karate classes in Germany, you know. And <laughs> I remember that he would like he would be he would really be up late all the time. So he would like go to bed at like sometimes four o'clock. So he was like he would text me sometimes, he's like, Gordon Gorson, one one last thing, and I would be like Sensei, what is it? And he's like, I know you want to go to sleep, but we have to discuss one more thing. And so he would let me go to bed at four. I would actually practically throw my jacket across my head. And then I would sleep until he would like wake me up at seven o'clock in the morning. It's time for calligraphy practice. Everyone who's in jail is doing calligraphy practice. So for him, it was like really important to do calligraphy practice. And so here I was in this like special position and he would be, I don't know what he would be doing filing his nails, drinking a cup of coffee, doing something beautiful while I'm on his tatami and sometimes would stay there for like three, four weeks. And man, you know, your bum starts hurting, man. Mm -hmm. Like it's like it's 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 hard, you know, it's it's hard. But it was in the whole time that I was with him, it was sometimes I was like, Do you think you should man, is this real? Like are you like, is this real? Like it can't be real, right? It was like it was the real deal. And people yeah. would come by and visit. And it was like, yeah, you know, sometimes you would see like, man, a lot of people were great guys. And sometimes some people, you know, like especially some of his clients, they were like, yeah, I suppose they were the way they were, you know, but they were friendly. They were great. I had a great time. It was, it was really like, it was a surreal atmosphere. And so, yeah, that's, you know, um, what we were doing, you know, it's like um, Sensei was, for him, it was important that you get the message and he was strict because he was teaching us a lot of stuff all the time. Like, we had a Facebook group and we were 
always on that all the time. And when Sensei meant like, now this is the whole thing, you would draw something and Sensei would give you an answer for exactly one thing on the drawing. He wouldn't correct you in 10 things. He would give you one drawing. And then you'd do another drawing and then he would give you another answer for it. And somewhere along the line, I I don't know, it was some time in, I, um, I sent him the same drawing and he corrected me on something else. And I was like, Okay, man, you've you've got to redraw the draw this. So I started doing the same drawing with color codes, and he would correct me on color codes, and he would correct me on the right garment design, right? So, and the right background, and how's it going to be with the gakubo, you know, and whatever. So he was really clued up, and the information was flying. And so he would give us like chores to do, you know, like homework, and mm-hmm. he would tell us like, yeah, okay, this is finished until tomorrow morning at eight, but you already knew like, uh, sensei, my time or your time. And there wasn't an answer. So you knew it was going to be his type, which gives you eight hours less. So you knew you were in trouble. You were actually on the way to bed, but you know exactly now, yep, let's get music going on. Let's get a cup of coffee. Let's get this up, you know. And then two and a half hours later, sometimes it was rough because you were preparing for, you know, um, the client and you also, well, yeah, the thing is, Sensei didn't like the, the term client. He didn't like it at all. It's the person who comes to you to get, you know, like what's happening because he didn't like the word, client with or or you know like a customer because he said that that brings uh bad news to the game you know that's that's got something with western ideals of let me do this massive back piece it's going to be great because i'm going to earn and it's like that's not what it's about right so he would work as much as he would need to live and have a comfortable going about but he was never about riches he was always about he always said to me it was never it's not about you and it took me a long time to try and find out what he meant was it's not about you. And then you start finding out that it's about ideals and about being a correct guy and not, you know, this this is the whole thing. And then you start getting into ethics and morals. It's about being a good person. And I think this is what we all strive for, you know. I mean, I was before we started the interview, I was like, so you're going to sit in front of like a wall without anything? And I was like getting all crazy, right? Because I saw the interviews <laughs> of the guys. And I picked up on on London's interview, you know. And man, that is an amazing interview because the funny thing is I had been speaking to London while I was with Sensei, right? And uh, I don't know, you know, it, 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 we've all got stuff to do, so we stopped communicating thing, but in a good sense. So otherwise I wouldn't yeah, mention this, you know, because this is the whole thing. Mentioning names is one thing. So if you're doing it, you do it well, but otherwise don't mention a name at all. So, hey, London, you know. Uh, but that was an amazing interview because he started talking about, you know, like, all of his black and all that. And I thought like, wow, how open and free is that? You know, like he's clued up. He moved from where he was living to some other place and he's living there and he's taking it the hard way. And maybe it's easy for him now. And now he's like, you know, he's rocking it, you know, yeah. he's, he's doing it, you know. But the thing is, it's about doing it the hard way. And that's what we did. You know, we flew to Sensei. I mean, Rick Larson, me, you know, um, we had, Sensei had like 10 disciples, right? Like he, he had this thing about, wanting to teach the whole world how to tattoo. And he was in communication with a lot of people. So he had 10 disciples and there was people from all over the globe where you'd think to yourself like, man, why that country? Like, why, why would you do that, right? Anyway, so um, in the end, it was just the three of us. I think that a lot of them dropped out because of effortlessness. Is there a word like that in English? Uh, no, not, you know, of their own effort and because of... Co- personality reasons you know mm-hmm. and sensei was uh he was very very clued up on and on, on on he would sometimes like he was finished with someone and he would just watch them for like how their reaction's going to be you know he wasn't playing with them but he was just waiting to see if his word was going to be corrected right and he was never ever wrong so in the end it was lars from canada uh from miami and uh, rick from from canada mm-hmm. and He's in Calgary and and me and we were jetting back and forth to go and see him since as many times as we could. I was flying three four times a year. It was crazy, man. You know, it forced me to not have a studio anymore because hey. it was like before COVID. And I just decided like, okay, so rent is going to be taken down. You're going to be there. You when you get back, rent is going to be back. Then you need a week to acclimatize. Like, fuck it, I'm over with this. I don't feel like a studio anymore. The thing is. You've got to find a base where you work with the people to f- have them all feel comfortable, right? So, you know, I made my arrangements, how to be comfortable with people and where to f- where they can find me and how it's going to be. And I suppose you just type in a name somewhere on Google and I suppose going to pitch up. Is that a good way of, you know, finding someone? 
And it's funny that people in your own town can't find you because they're like, I heard you retired. And it's like, yeah, well, you see, this is the whole thing about people being open-minded or not. So yeah. London was very open-minded. And that's why it stands for me as a good interview, you know, because it's yeah. like there's a lot of information that people who are interested are going to get tattooed, maybe uh, aren't interested, but just don't want to watch any more stuff about baking cakes you know and and it's a it's a because you're bringing a new culture you know your yeah. your your channel here is doing something interesting you know and um i was thinking about are you going to do this interview or not and i asked the others and i said like are we going to do this and they were like hell yeah i mean of course you're going to do it you've got some stuff to say i said but that's not the whole thing the thing is are we going to do this you know because we want to be actually just doing our stuff and be in the background and both of them said like yeah no no it's a good channel man and it, and it's a good thing because it's going to grow. And I think people who are interested in that's especially tattooers and holy she, yeah, which yeah. Means that's what I said just now with the whole talking in front of people. It's it's difficult because I know that this video is going to be there and, and people are listening to it. So it, it does make it a bit, you do get, you too tend to get nervous, you know, and I think it's just like that, you know, I mean, um, yeah, I don't know to get back to straying away from the question. Sensei was loving and he was a very funny person, but he was he was strict, you know. And and for him, the foremost thing was um, to have disciples from around the globe. And he was making sure that none of us were going to mess it up. And he was dead strict with like he. I think that we were getting like the real version of how it was going to be if you would be in Japan. It it was mm -hmm. much that because when I was there, you know. The cat would do something that the okay, so we're all 18 here, right? The cat poos on the tatami and Sensor didn't even look. Like I was already like <laughs> up. I was already cleaning it. And Sensor just looked and he carried on working. He was about to call his you know, maybe call someone to do it, you know. But I was already on it, you know. And that that's the whole thing, you know. When you travel to places like different smells, different environments, a cat's doing its thing, you know, and you have to do it because it better be perfect, you know. How yeah. many needles I soldered and he always told me it's it's atrocious. It's not cool. So yeah, you know, my time with Sensei was very valuable. He spoke to me all day, every day. I, I it's incredible how much he taught me in that short time. Incredible. Well, then that is incredible. I, I, a lot of very interesting bits that that you dropped in there. You know, I, I can tell just by listening to you how how special and how strict and and how powerful that that interaction with the master must have been. And of yeah. course, I think at some point in the future, we, we should definitely dig deeper into that one. But I also found mm -hmm. some interesting things in there. You know, you mentioned a Facebook group. I wouldn't have thought about that. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. How how I in a good is. way. That's... Oh, definitely. You know, you posted up pictures and some information and we changed it. And that was a learning curve. It went steep. It went steep. It was amazing. <laughs> you know, everyone <laughs> correcting his work discussing ins and outs of all sorts of stuff you know and and it's also i don't know you know like he would like he would like when we were back we would watch all of his videos like he made loads of videos teaching us how to rub ink and how's the pressure and what are you doing and how's it gonna be and and then you start start getting into like all the stuff like so he has an ink that he rubs for just his medium gray eh. and then you're getting all fancy and trying to do it and it doesn't work and you get really frustrated because Tibor is very, very difficult. I mean, if I had not been tattooing for at least 10 to 15 years, I would not know what the hell he wanted from me. Because there was translation difficulties and all that, you know, it was like, it, w it was it was unreal. And then he had his own gray that he would rub just for light gray. And it's like, eh, uh, I think I don't understand anything. It wasn't because it was like different layers, different grays, but it was just because the, 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 the size of the corn of a, of a, of a uh, of of a gray that you're rubbing, you know, yeah. um, corn size is it's just different, and sometimes it just doesn't gonna you know, go with what you want to have. So um, there you have it again, you know, comparing that that to what you know you can find out about Irizumi and and which is sorry for that because it's a bad word, but about Hori Mono and, and doing it because uh, Irizumi is used by uh, officials, so it's not actually yeah. a good expression because it's inserting ink and it's just more of one point. So Hori Mono is one carving. So sorry about that, but anyway, it's good to be found on a on a hashtag base, yeah. But I think <laughs> people should maybe stop using the hashtags and and uh, start using the wise ones and the real ones instead of trying to be found all the time and and whatever. But 
rubbing those inks, you would you would see like the differences, right? Because it was like medium gray is cool when you're doing it on like the on someone's arm, but when you do it on his ribs, it's like, yeah, okay, this is different. And light gray is that's like dirty water, man, and it, it just doesn't work for me, you know. So know. I'm practicing. I'm practicing, you know. Sensei had 40 years of Tabori experience, you know, 40 years. So when he did something, the speed was practically like when when I'm working with a machine. It, maybe it was a bit slower, but man, it was like it was like amazing. I've seen him do, do so many big things with with people in one session. It was like never tired, you know. This is a <laughs> lot to tell. And especially because we went through this phase of his where he was like full on cancer and he eventually deceased from that. Um, and yeah, you know, he took me everywhere. He took me to the doctor. He took me to the grave. He took me to his former, you know, to the to the grave it's, that he already had, you know. And 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 I went everywhere with him. It was a it was a wonderful time. It really was, man. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, it, and it's and and the thing is also that it's um, yeah, okay. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> no worries. You know, you can, you can, people love this stuff. So you can just keep on going and they'll leave yeah. it out. So don't worry that's, that's about it. That's the whole thing, you know. It's like, yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't, I always have the feeling I'm, I'm, I'm getting too far out. And people's like, man, that guy's like, that guy's like in the matrix. It's like, yeah, <laughs> I guess you try, you kind of have to be, you know, because the thing is, you want it to be real. And I think that Sensei, uh, saw the thirst that I had, you know, because I mean, right. okay, so when I started tattooing, you're going to do whatever you're going to do and you're doing it and, and it's and it's cool and it's, it's fun and all that. And then somewhere along the line, I was, of course, I was doing, of course, also here and there, my Japanese tattoo, also 20 years ago. But it was like, well, you know, maybe this dragon, I'm going to make it purple. And it's like, you cannot make a dragon purple. It's reserved for three or four families in Japan. How? How dare you? You know, just like you cannot do that because in Japan you would get into real big trouble if yeah. you got to go and steal steal someone's style, because these these people it's a sort of like an identification, you know. And yeah. and I, I have to say that um, every group has its like source of of identification. So of course they don't want to be mixed up with someone else. So you know, for everyone out there to understand it a little bit better, it's like. You can't do a purple dragon if it's not if if you're not from that lineage, you know. And it's it's the same with all sorts of different little things that that um, make tattooing dif difficult, you know. You've got to try and find your own way of doing water. Of course, you're going to be inspired from um, different things, but it's better to sort of like, okay, so that's what I'm inspired from. I'm going to redraw this, and what can I take from that? So your learning curve in what you can do for yourself is it's it's steep. You've really got to really be honored to find out how your cherry blossoms are going to look Dang. for the next 20 years. You don't want to change them in five years' time. You don't want to change your clouds either in five years' time. I mean, of course, everyone had like uh, his history and you could see how things evolved, right? Dang. I'm not talking about evolution and how people's tattoos looked in the 70s and then they looked like in the in the 80s or whatever. I'm just saying like you've got to be clued up because they, they, they still stay to the root. You know, even if Sensei's cherry blossoms changed a bit, but you can still actually recognize that they're from him because it's like there's a yeah. root. There's a root how to do, uh, let's say, I'm looking at the sky all the time. Um, there's a root how to do, let's say, like a tiger. If you're going to shade a tiger, so you're just going to do it with a magnum or you're going to do it with lines. Now, what's going to make it look more tough and what's going to make it look more subtle? And the thing is, I, as that's why I started in the beginning of the interview with telling you that I'm from South Africa is, I might be a romantic guy because I like lit sitting on the on the top of a of a mountain, uh, and that's kind of romantic when you're doing that on yourself and just listening to the birds flying around and some wind and all that. But otherwise, yeah, I'm affectionate, of course, but I'm just also very unromantic. Like I'm a very, um, I just do it, and I don't always want to think about stuff. Like he said that and that, okay. and then 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 someone says that, and then you have to try and give it an answer. I don't the thing for me it is like it's just the way it is and if it's and if there's a problem we have to deal with it yeah. that's just the way it is and sometimes it just gets nasty but the thing is um you've got to do your best and you've just got to give up on some stuff and just carry on going that path and do it yourself and I think that's what you have to do you just have to you have to try and create it yourself and there's a lot of busy hungry bees out there where I say like man these guys are incredible they've done their homework they're so good you know 
And that's, of course, where, where the fun comes in, you know? It's like, yeah, love it. Love it. Mm, that's awesome. No, I, I love that you mentioned that because, and just so, so everyone knows and, and gets a little bit more more insight, you know, I obviously I talk with a lot of Florishi from from all over, from all over the world, right? But but also obviously in in Japan, and then sometimes some stuff that I don't release, but that I hear from certain people is like, you know, hey, I I used to be with this family, and um, now my my background is a little bit different because I left that family, and I can't use that background anymore, right? Or hey, this is the the special way that we do the the mikiri, or or the pigments, right? This the special way we do this color, right? And so, uh, the let's say the unwritten rules that that Gordon here, that Kisaragi the second here mentioned, it's it, it's a real thing, right? And obviously, in the West, maybe not being privy to to that world, not being an an, an insider, maybe you don't have that insight, right? But it's it's a real thing. There are unwritten rules that are very important to maintain this this tradition. So it's very awesome that you bring it up so that people are a little bit more aware. The thing the thing is, like. Everyone's watching movies, right? And they're going to watch, like, let's say, I don't know. You got that famous movie that's going through your mind right now, right? And you're eating nachos. And you're going to watch, like, the next movie. And you're going to watch nachos. And then you're walking down the road. And you're going to see someone harm someone else. And you're actually going to just watch, really? That kind of a guy? Yeah. So that's the kind of tattoo you've also got to be. That's the kind of client. Well, since I hated that word. But that's the yeah. kind of person you've got to be when you go to receive. Because you go there, you shut up. Because I shut up as well when I get tattooed, you know. And 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 that's in, there's a kind of ethical rule expectancy, you know. I tell you, Sensei would sometimes tell me. Well, t I tell you, but I, sorry, but <laughs> Sensei would sometimes tell me like um, that there was a lot of like stuff that 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 like the, the groups in Japan are the the reason why people fancy this kind of culture, okay. and they're trying to outculture it, right? So. Yeah. They they make a lot of movies and 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 you'll find them on all the social depressive media you can watch right and it's always like yeah you know and these groups are all losing count and everything well to be honest not on the countryside so the thing is how do you you know no without no media coverage but to be honest it was like these people were taking care of crime it's an absurd thing to to say right you'd think like what the hell is he talking about now no the thing is that uh, Japan was like a totally different before um, I'll quit it right there but the thing is Japan was difficult yeah because otherwise go starts talking about officials and then my videos yeah. be, gets downloaded but um, the thing is they were taking care of a lot of stuff you know and for us as tattooers from outside of Japan uh, sensei realized that we were hungry for um, for ethics for morals we were hungry yeah. for how do we do this sensei how does the background work and so you can't say that it's not cultural property. Now, this is what the world around us is telling us is that like, well, the media is often telling us that it's not good and, and, and it's a bad thing. But the thing is, it has a cultural prop, prop, you know, there's, a, there's a, a, a property and we should cherish it because when it's gone, it's gone, you know. Yeah. And I, I, I can expect that there's not going to be I don't think that everyone's going to retire as a tattooer because we got times coming ahead of us that we're gonna we're gonna have difficulties, you know. And I think if you want to keep it up, you better stop using a pen for tattooing because that stuff may not be delivered. You know, you've got to find out how to do your needles yourself. How where do you put them? Which bamboo do you take? Do you take bamboo? Do you take sterilized unit? Are you going to put it on a jig? Are you going to use you know like which normie, which sashi boy are you going to take for tibori? You know. Which, how do you make pigments? Does anyone actually know how to make pigment? Amen. So you have to know about all these things. And that was the thing where Sensor would say to me, like, not that red. That one's poisonous. You can take this one. But don't tell anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and, and okay, today everything's getting better and we've got pigments that are all whatever, you know, and there are some companies out there doing some really good stuff, but is what it is, you know. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, you know. And now maybe I'll make a, a, it's not a random comment, but I'll just throw this, this in here. But you can really tell when a tattoo has been done by, let's just call it custom, custom ink, right? Made from pigment, made from scratch versus one of those standard ready to use inks, right? I'm not bashing the, the standard inks, but there's a difference that you can appreciate when you look at you the, at you the tattoo. 
Yeah. You can, because the first way to tell the difference, secrets, uh, the first way to tell the difference is if if you actually, um, so what color is my tattoo going to be when the green heals off? It's like, yeah, if you take a drop of that green and you put it onto like a cloth, that was our old method back in the day, you'll see the green and that's practically how it's going to uh, uh, heal off minus 20%. And you'll notice one thing that when you actually take a drop of ink and you put it between your fingers and you rub it for a while and then you put it under tap water, that's what's sticking on your fingers. If it's a little bit, it's fine because pigment does do that. But if it's like um, uh, car paint and hearts and, you know, that stuff that makes everything stiff and, and out, out of pigment, you know, that for, for jeans, uh, you know, dyeing jeans and all that, Nine. it's going to stick to your fingers like hell. And so you can see if someone's using, uh, sorry for getting country technical, but you can see if someone's taking Chinese pigment or if someone's taking pigment because pigment in Japan is more... It's 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 more slow, you know. It's like it's more pastel, and everything that's a little bit bright. It's beautiful to have bright colors. You've got them in the background, whatever. The thing is, um, that's a good thing, you know, and that's got something to do with your contrast range. But the thing is, um, there is a difference because Tibor is put into the second skin layer, and 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 machine work is done into the third layer, and so that over time, the one is going to become more dominant than the other one. But if you're using good pigment, man, you know, like I would, we would, Lars, like sen Sensei, I don't know, you know, like a whole batch of pigment, like 10 colors. And then Sensei was like, this is crap. And then without saying anything, Lars sent him like another 10. It's like, oh, that was like 400. That's another 400, you know. So, but Sensei would like use them. And then he would tell us like, this is, this is really cool. So in the end, yeah, maybe we were giving Sensei a lot of stuff, but we did it on free will and we did it because we loved him, you know. And uh, but now we know which yellow in the West is cool, but we also know which yellow he was taking, you know. So um, we've got like a, a pride of colors that we can take, and and yeah, you know, if you if you if you if you look at the stuff, it's cool. I don't know, you know, it's 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 difficult. I suffer from doing Tibori, you know, because it's like the position you're sitting in, yeah. you know, and 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 that's that kind of stuff, you know. Until you you have to stretch, man. You have to rub ink. Yeah gonna do that for one and a half hours before your client even knows you're there you know and and it's and it's yeah it's it's heavy you know it starts with a different kind of daybreak you know the daybreak's not at seven anymore it's at six <laughs> you know i gotta feed the cats and get all of it done but if you don't get up at six then you're not going to be done until midday you know and then when you get home it's yeah it's a concentration celebration man mm. it really is. it really is it's tough awesome. it's good because it's the traditional way of doing it yeah. And that's what's the whole thing why we got to, into doing Tibori, you know, is it's 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 a it's a tradition. Japanese tattoos are done like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that was one of my next questions. So we can just expand a little bit as you want, right? Like, obviously, yeah, I'm getting glimpses of it. If you know, we we have good listeners and and people watching, they might also have picked some some cues. But are there any specific reasons why you chose to pursue the the Tibori technique? <laughs> well, the first one was because Sensei was like. Yep, that's cool. We we didn't have like a choice or anything, you know. Yeah. It was like hey, you're doing this because real Japanese tattoos are done with with Tibori, and we're like, yeah, okay. So how do we do this, you know? And then uh, Sensei saw that I was like there, had a question mark in my face, like, and he was like, "Got on, got on, come on over." And all of a sudden, I knew I was like filling out cherry blossoms on someone's leg, you know, and it felt good, man. <laughs> you know, and it felt good, and so. I was I was finished with with doing it and Sensei was like yeah cherish it yeah the stick is yours now you know he always said stick because he didn't want to get fancy with all the expressions and all that you yes. know <laughs> it's your stick now you know but um yeah it's it's uh, why do you why do you do it I mean there is a difference when 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 uh, when you think about how to put on Tibori or machine tattoos, you know, like that kind of difference, it's like the one's going to be able to give you much more detail. So if you take a thin line, you're going to maybe be able to put much more detail into that tattoo. If you take a fat line, you already have much more black in the tattoo already. And then you just have to whip it out the areas and then it's going to be like bold, you know. So there are uh, Horishi, Japanese tattooers in Japan that do like a really like tough, uh, bold style, you know, um, and it looks cool, but it's it's also part of the culture, you know. Like mm. it's, it's not everything is detailed, you know. Like Sensei would tell us to use two colors instead of one. Like let's let's make this look let let's make this look beautiful, you know. Let's take like a dark green and a and a and, a, and not just one green. 
And let's not just keep it to like a basic color code. Like let's just take like uh, Sumi black and then let's take a uh, shoe and, and you know, whatever. But like, let's use all of the colors because the thing is when Sensei started tattooing, I think it was 1982, you know, uh, 80, 83, something like that. Um, that's definitely like sh shower area, you know, it's like yeah. that whole. So of course he gave me all the books of, um, mm. I don't know, you know, like Horitsuna and and Horiweno and all those people who you, who you'd see. And there's a bunch of books that would be put out in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. And uh, he would, you know, he'd give them along to me and he'd say like, study them, you know. And, and then we'd discuss it on Facebook in the group. We'd discuss like, so what's good in this tattoo and what's bad, you know? And the thing is that you'll see a whole bunch of people doing like it's it's almost like graffiti, right? So they'll do Taisho era tattoos, but they're really with fat lines. And then they've got like this amazing detail in the middle and i think that's for me is like it's a clash right so what i'd think is is i try to take the best of all the worlds but i also try to be all 80s uh, sensei loved that i was doing a mixture between his old way of doing things and his new way of doing things because um yeah because because you know um i think if especially with garment design you have to zoom things up because otherwise it's just not going to work with Tibori, you know. Yeah. Um, if you've got a face that's got lots of detail, I don't think it's too bad because in Japan you probably wouldn't shade the face anyway, except for around the eyes. You do the same with the hands and the, and the yeah. feet. So you can be detailed on that, but you, even when you're doing Tibori, you don't have to keep it like every face is like, you know. And you change the faces because it's about that one second expression, right? It's about, yeah. you know, you've got to have that kind of expression right that moment and that's what the tattoo is about you know and who's it for who's getting that tattoo so you know when you talk about like the bukiri like that straight cut because of the sword right um mm -hmm. sensei was doing it because he was of course you know prominently known throughout the island with uh having being affiliated and and he was still registered so uh that was whatever you know and um he would put it on all of his clients but he always said to me, like, man, you know, if you have someone who's a craftsman, maybe put the board time, Mikiri. Mm. And if you see someone who's got the ethics to be a righteous person, you know, just go back like 10 minutes in the interview. Uh, if you see someone on the street having a tough time, don't be that nachos guy, man. You know, you've got to be an ethical guy. So if you see someone who's ethical, I, I suppose you can do it. But if you see someone who's kind of like, I want this because this is like fancy. I saw this guy doing it. It's like, yeah. That's beautiful, but I mean, that's kind of that's kind of weird. I mean, that appears yeah. to me as being like a fashion victim, you know. So yeah. careful what you put on people, and careful who you do it on, you know. I mean, that's particularly a reason why I don't tattoo any ghosts at all. So I there's people who do it, you know. But the thing is, I think, mm, yeah, you know, that's that's like that's that's we can speak about that maybe just now again after like regather a few thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's great. And he also dropped on another, I think, educational bit, right, that many people don't really think about, but I think it's a it's a very good contrast between Japan and, let's just say, non-Japan tattooers, and that is that in Japan, like you mentioned, you don't often shade the, the skin, right, unless it's a different color. Obviously, you're going to do it, but if it's like skin color, then you just use the skin, right? You don't you don't shade it. You and, don't have to. And no. it, in the West, you, you see a lot of people still shading it anyway, and then it's like, Sometimes they might use this, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm not going to get too into it because who knows what's going to happen, but they might use a, a pigment that they found for white and then obviously throughout time that's going to change in color and then suddenly it doesn't look, you, you got all this wall of not nice looking color, right? Whereas you could have just let it be, don't don't, don't color it, don't shade it, just use the, the skin. It would have looked a lot better, right? So I think that's mm -hmm. a very interesting bit and, and difference between Japan and and not right. Japan, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right. So let me see what else we got in here. So actually, before I keep talking about you know, um, you know your, your your style and and your tattoos and so on and so forth, I do want to ask you a question that a lot of people might ask, and I don't know, maybe they ask you, maybe they don't, but let's just put it on the record here. Um, obviously, can you explain the reason why there's two names? There's Kisaragi, right? Kisaragi one, Kisaragi two over here. And and Horikoi, right? So, well, what's the reasoning behind that? Ooh, here we go. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
the years uh, um how to express this politely well okay so everyone has his history and um I'll start off with the first one because Hori Koi is the the carving carp um, is the name that uh, Sensei was given from uh, the third carver generation in Yokohama, and they were really good friends, and um, that that's practically the first name. But he was never a disciple. Like they, they drew a lot together. They met with each other. They had fun. They went to karaoke. They did everything that friends do. Um, Sensei actually also, there's a song, you know, about third cover generation, you know, and um, uh, so that was like the first name. And he was also given, uh, maybe some people don't know that actually, but tattoos, when you're looking for like the signature, when you're looking at a, at a painting, you often enough don't see that there is, uh, they're, 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 you know, like the Hori Mai or the, the Senja Fuda or what you want to call it. But there's like some something that that doesn't look like their signature. It's because mm. it's a painter's name. So uh, the Yorai was Sensei's painter name. It was also given to him from third carver generation. Now, to distinguish um, the difference between um, the, twi the the difference between uh, the names is that Sensei would sign a lot of his customers with that name because there's of course also pride because. Sensei was a strong believer that the shower period, and that was like the whole period of, yeah, I don't know, you know, like uh, Matsumura and then Koronuma, Horiyoshi 2, Horiyoshi 3, what a genius, you know, what a legend. Um, and of course, you're going to find different beliefs and everyone's got his own way of thinking about it. But I think that he, I think that the third cover generation became important for tattooing because, you see, the thing is, when you analyze someone's work, you have to really think about what puts that person on a map. So what put him on a map? I can tell you what put him on a map. What put him on the map was his inventional genius way of doing things. You see, if you put like a design on someone's front, then the design is there and then you're going to put like the whole back background. And if you do the same with the back and you have all the background, he was the first to practically have a dragon go outside of the, you know, of the gaku, of the area that's tattooed. And then when you put the front piece on, you just continue that, dragging around so i think that this fill all spaces genius was something that i think re you know it, it was a revolution in tattooing definitely in that time so you can't always go back to say like yeah yeah well okay this is going to be taisho taisho and everyone wants to be taisho and everyone wants to be like also old school and everything it's absolutely cool because i love it I've, I've done a number of stuff like in that way but the thing is when i changed to sensei school it was very, very difficult to start drawing like him. Man, I've spent hours trying to just draw a face. And and it's and you have to respect the shower area because that's when a lot of stuff happened in tattooing, you know. Uh also in the in the new era, the Haiza yeah. area, you know, a lot of stuff happened. So you have to differentiate, you know, uh what you're looking at and where it's coming from, you know. And I think that that was the thing, you know. So keeping it short, Hoi Koi was from the third carver generation, Yokohama. The same with his painter's name, Kisaragi. That's a new one. Um, a lot of people uh, think that that's a new name. It's not a new name at all. It was the name that he started off with, and it's the name that he signed all of his work with, and it's never been seen. But uh, that's the name that he used when he was signing his pieces while he was uh, a member and um, affiliated, you know. And then there's uh, another name, and Sensei used that name again. Uh, in the last past three years of his life, um, he 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 wanted to you know he it was important for him to return to all of his kind of roots and everything. So mm. he's using Kisaragi again because there's more there's a lot of pride in Kisaragi, you know, and especially because the name has uh, it's the old name for February, you know. So a lot of stuff in his life happened in February, and and that's how it goes, you know. And the 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 last name. That's a red ink title, you know. So the the Akaboku title is a title that you get when you're in jail. So Sensei was a jail tattooer, and um, he actually did tattoo in jail, you know. And you'd think like, no, and it's like, yes, no. <laughs> he did. He did. He did quite a bit of stuff there, and everyone was okay with it because they had their ways of going about it that it's going to be okay, right? And yeah, so it's very interesting. 
Mm. So yeah, that's awesome. I could carry, uh, sorry for interrupting. I could I could carry on with that, but I have right. to this I have to zip myself right there, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I it, it's special, right? And this is part of the I don't know if special unless it's even a word, right? But let's just see stuff. Let's just go with it. Right. Of of talking to you and learning more about your story and your and your family's story, so to speak, because here we have organization affiliated uh tiles right in in, in the family and in the master and so on and so forth and that obviously carries a lot of of uh, you know meetings and consequences as uh, his work and you know this is why he did that this is why he was named as such right and this is why this is being handed down this way so so very interesting not many people can can hear about such stuff or see such stuff so it's very cool to to be talking about it right now that's awesome all right so let me see what else so actually shifting gears radically shifting topics do you have a favorite subject the tattoo it's a difficult one because i actually like all the subjects right because <laughs> i think it's 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 the whole thing you know the when you're when you're looking for uh knowledge and you're quenching that thirst you know you you get past everything you get past your kai and flowers and dragons and snakes and whatever you know i think what I do like is um, I do like wizards for some reason, you know, and because um, they can tap into whatever, you know, like they've got their ways of the ways of persuasion, you know, and that they, they all have actually old meaning. I'm not talking about the difference between well, I'm talking about the difference between the old traditional stories, which you have to read yeah. and Ipudan, let's say, like, uh, let's say like Naruto. Yeah. Now they use all the old traditional names and stories, but they're it's a bit different so you some stuff you have to be aware that you don't get confused about that you know um yeah okay well you yeah, know actually that's another bit to, to comment on obviously we have like you mentioned before all sorts of people watching and listening to this we have tattooers we have people who are getting work done we are we have people who don't have any tattoos but they just think this is very cool so they want to know more about it we might have people that just randomly stumble upon it right and they're listening into right. it right now and you know in in japanese like modern japanese manga and, and anime and games and stuff like that in media they might use names from like historical or, or traditional figures but then they you know it's it's a modern thing so they'll give it a their own spin their own story and, and such right it's mm -hmm. not technically the the original traditional meanings associated with the names right so that's yeah. the difference that, that we're talking about here, right? The the actual stories, the actual traditional stories, right? That you might read in the, I don't know, the Nihon Shoki or something like that versus just the modern stuff that uses the name, but the substance is, is different, right? Yeah, it's changed slightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Cool. All right. So on a similar line, is there like a subject or a theme that you would like to tattoo but haven't had the chance in? There was this one story that's always accompanied me since I've been with Sensei, you know, and it's 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 Benton Kid, uh, Kikonozuka. It's an honorable thief, you know, and um, it's just like you'll see it sometimes that he's like sitting on a um, on some kind of like stage, you know, and there's like numerous things. I'll shorten the story out. It's it's about uh, someone who. It's about the old way of how things would be able to work. So. What makes it special is is there's this um, he he goes into he goes into a, like a, a, a clothing shop where you can buy like texture, and he takes uh, just a piece of it of the cloth, and he pays for it and he he puts the cloth into his pocket and he puts also the the payment slip into his pocket and he goes into a different store, and um, he uh, he he slips the cloth underneath all of the cloths. And then when he sees that someone's looking, he takes that piece of cloth out again and leaves the shop. So someone runs after him and says, like, you've been stealing. And he says, no, I haven't been stealing. But now, how was the market space back then, right? So it was all out and open and all sorts of stalls. You know, everyone would meet outside. And if it's raining, they had their ways of, you know, everything was touched roof and whatever. So uh, this, now there's 20 people listening. Now there's 30 people listening, right? And... Uh, so he's like he's he's a thief and he's like no 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 I'm not a thief man like I'm 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 an honorable person right I'm I'm not a thief so and he says like well prove it and he like he pulls out the he pulls out the receipt that he bought that in a different shop but now comes the part where he says well now that you've like 
killed my reputation. You have to you have to give me some kind of <laughs> you know we, we have to we have to speak to each other. We have to make this work, right? So, um, and next door someone is getting his hair cut. So the the um, the policeman he he chases him onto the roof and there's like the showdown and whatever you know. So, and it, it's the whole tea shop thing. But this this whole design about you know how to get around being a gokudu about how to get around life and making it work for you no matter if you if you're working in any kind of company whatever your occupation is you know it's like you everyone needs these tricks to make uh -huh. life work. I'm not talking uh -huh. about you have to be a thief I'm just saying like this is a a, a sort of like an, F, an it's a it's a good lesson in life you know that you shouldn't um actually until you're very sure, you shouldn't book, judge a book by its cover, you know, and you shouldn't tell people that they're a thief because you really don't know how it is. Although it was kind of clear, right? But yeah. so that image, I think Benton is cool, you know, and 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 yeah, that that would be something, you know. People, I think, when they see it, they think it's a boring design, you know. It's got like this, uh, got like the head banner, and then there's the name of the the tea shop in the top, and it's very peaceful looking, and you know what? It's 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 cool. I like it, you know. Mm. That's cool. Well, well, that's one of those designs that, that are sort of, if you know, you know, right? You, you sort of have to have that insider knowledge of what's going on to really appreciate yeah. the piece. So that, that makes it special by itself. Um, it is. Awesome. It's fun one, you know? Someone out there do it, man. <laughs> Bring yeah. it back. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. What about, um, you know, I, I know this is, obviously, if people have been watching some of this, some of the episodes and the videos, or, or they just know, right? Uh, the the suiko then water margin is is from Chinese origin, but I always like to ask the question because it did have a very big impact on Japanese culture and and, and tattooing. And the question is, do you have a favorite outlaw or or scene from suiko? Yeah, many. I've tattooed lots of them already, um, and it's always good to do them. You know, I mean, sensei would always step away from stereotypes, so he wasn't all this like because there are tattooers in Japan that only do solely Japanese uh, designs. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, there's also the Kashingura, you know, um, the 47 Ronin, and there's also the Haken and the Eight Dog Story. I like doing stuff from that, really, but also I admire the Soikon. Like, I've torn it apart because it was practically one of the th the first things when, long before I met Sensei, I, I had already started, you know, on my own studies and like, I don't understand this, so what's all this about? So, there is actually even a German translation, Die Räuber vom Leon Scharnmarsch, and... Um, so you read it, you know, and you start gathering information and who's which star. So there's 108 stars of destiny and they're all demonic stars. And, you know, they they actually the thing is, Sensei always said to me, they don't actually die a heroic uh, death because they all, you know, they all get, they all, I don't know the English word for it, but Gnade is the German one for it. But like someone says like, okay, well, okay, we're not going to kill all of them, but they have to go for the Song Dynasty and they're going to fight against the Mongolians. So, But none of them came back. Just a few of them come back, you know, like hey. one lost his leg, one lost his arm. And uh, there's a there's a lot of them. But Sensei was not about like, okay, so Peonis and Chrysanthemums is Chinese and Sakura and Momjiji is, uh, 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 you know, is, is Japanese and we're only doing Japanese stuff and what's going to be the background for that and that. Yeah, that's very difficult, you know. And, I, and that's one of those things that you really have to, really have to get into to not mess up you know which background you're going to do for which warrior you know and, right. and and i think that's very important you know um and you see it like wrong all the time and i think that's you know the thing is just sitting here right now it's not just an image man people it's not just an image you have to inform yourself and uh, sometimes i have clients that they know more than i do you know like with some they they pitch up with a character and it's like i want that one and i'm like hmm now it's I'm, you know, like I'm pretty kind of safe, you know, <laughs> sometimes I'll pitch up with something and it's like, oh, I've never heard about that one, you know, and then all of a sudden you really have to, it's an endless theme, right? But, um, so stepping away from stereotypes, it's like the mix and match, right? So, okay. So that warrior has that kind of background, but like, what about, you know, um, making it, you know, just making it work, you know, when is someone born in which month is he born? Is he born in October? Okay. So then he needs maybe maple flowers for his background, right? So that means if he's getting maple flowers, he's definitely not getting a young boy because he's half naked, you know? So it's not a summer image. You can't mix the summer image with the background image of like maple leaves, or whatever, except for if you're showing extreme bravery. But the thing is, it's also, yeah, you know, that that kind of stuff, you know? So Zoikoden is highly interesting. I I, I like it a lot, you know? I, um, um, I think that... Uh, 
uh, Ni Ni Unrio uh, uh, Kosancho. I think that he's like the the wizard, you know, this Dao wizard with the, like the sword in front of his face, and he can tap into uh, the Matrix because he he can rule rain and 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 fog, you know. And uh, I like that image too much, you know. It's wizardry <laughs> again. It's about, the, it's about the Matrix, but he can he can influence certain things, and I like that, you know, because we all do it every day. And the thing is, if you do it, you know, like someone's asking for the way, but don't go down that road because everyone down that road's a bad guy. I'd rather go up that road, right? So you're influencing someone. And Bang. it's about being a good person, you know? So if you get Taoist, Taoist magic on you as a back back piece or, you know, whatever, I think that's that's kind of cool, you know? I mean, that's doing something positive. Let's get it. They're all bandits, right? But n- the reason is like, why were they all bandits, right? Because it's the first novel that actually is written down in history that is trying to overcome the slave system that we all live in. Maybe take that back. I don't know. <laughs> but it's the first kind of it's the first kind of novel where they're fighting against that, right? And all of them practically get it's like it's like eighteen. You know, first they win, then they lose, then they win again. But it's like uh, like one of those episodes. You know, you'd you'd see what they're doing, and then they would get arrested, and then they were on the way to Queen Fang Fort, and then that someone would probably, you know, like ambush that kind of carriage and then he's in it and then um, they would free him and say like, well, either it's, you know, that way or you're coming with us and they'd be like, hey, I'm coming with you guys, you know. <laughs> and uh, so that that's like that first novel, you know. So I think that that character, for, for an instance, really stands out, you know. Um, love it. And yeah, I don't know, you know, it's again and again, like I did a children back piece, but I wouldn't mind doing it again. There's so many different ways of doing things, you know. Dang. Incredible. Also, Rosheshin, you know, like this is a thing I, I I was listening to in in um in uh, Roberto's um in, uh, episode, you know, Horibudo, which I met in in Japan a couple of times. Great person and, uh, and very knowledgeable, and uh, yes, and you know, like I mean, uh, hello, Roberto. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but with all respect, right? You know, it's 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 a uh, it's it's great, you know. And talking about the flowery monk right there, you know, I sometimes ask myself because this was one of the people who were in Sensei's. Um, uh, becoming maybe a family member until Sensei realized the guy's not doing any homework, right? So is he observing us or whatever? The guy actually did open a Tibori school in China, and um, at, and that was that was so bad, you know. I mean, Sensei really he 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 was completely disgusted, and he really he didn't like the thought of it. Like it was like, ooh, let's not let's not talk to Sensei about that anymore. It was like it was a point that was not cool at all, you know. And that was one thing that he didn't like. He didn't like people making a Tibori school. Man, yeah, you know, there's people that do that here in the West. You would never do that in Japan. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, and, and the thing is, even if you're doing it here in the West, watch your step, man. Like, it's nothing to do, you know. And and he did that, right? But he, and then I, I wrote to him and I, I said to like, man, is it possible that you could maybe leave that? And he said to me, it would be self-inflicted pain, right? So it's a situation we still have to deal with in the future. But the thing being is, um, he was he was taught to tattoo in perfect perfectness, so every line is mint. And in Japanese tattooing, not every line is mint, because it took me a long time to realize that it's technical issues, it's design issues, and it's also feeling. And so, if you want to convey feeling in your tattoo, uh, yeah, some stuff does get a little bit rough, and it doesn't always have to be in there. You know, it's 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 a uh, it's handcrafted. So guess what, guys, you know. If something's not just the way it is, it's it's just everyone has his own look of doing things, you know. Like, yeah. and I think that's what you have to do, you know. You have to do it the way you do it, and you you grow into it, you know. Like, I mean, I've made tattoos uh, recently that are like the one has got like a lighter gray, and then the next one's got a darker gray, and it's like, yeah, would you like to ask me why the one's gr- gray is darker and the other one's a little bit lighter? It's like, yeah, that's Tibori, and that's Tibori on yeah. everyone. But the thing is, if you saw it on Sensei. Everyone's gray looked the same. And it's like, huh? Really? Yeah, it looked the same. So why is my gray different, right? And it's like, well, you know, I'd love to ask <laughs> Sensei, but he's not there anymore. And that's you know. where a lot of questions arise, you know. So yeah, Zoikuren, definitely part of it. Um, and there's ways to also to make it look Japanese, right? Because you see, the question that I ask myself is, so it comes from China. And uh, we owe it to China, yeah. But China says, like, accuses Japan to be a thief and 
to be, uh, you know, like nasty about it and then also cheeky and all that. I see it in a different sense because the thing is, I read it. I'm from Germany. You read it. You read it in Japan. It becomes you. You you, you put it in. And then you take like the flowery monk, let's say him, and he's got like cherry blossoms tattooed on him. Now, the definition of how to find out what has he actually got tattooed him? Because the thing is, someone from Japan put cherry blossoms on him because the original flower, I know which one, but the original flower which was on it was not a cherry blossom. So Amen. my answer now is, is sorry for being enthusiastic. I don't want to come across as being uh, whatever, but it is just the way it is. You know, I mean, this is it's free speech, right? So my question is, is if you're from China and you're looking back at Japan, why are you actually using a Japanese yeah. kind of design? You know, like, I mean, if you read the Zoikoden, there is no mentioning that the flowery monk, Lu Da, Lu Tsishin, whatever his names all were. He never fought with a snake, man. It's not written in there. So no. when that design came to Japan, he was fighting with a, with a snake because he was fighting with life. The way the snake finds its way through life, yeah? So he was, you know, he was he was actually an infantry leader. And then, yeah, okay. So we all know the story. Big, big deal. But, I mean, great deal, but big deal that I'm telling it to you. So the thing is, where does knowledge come from? And the thing is, it's not allowed to get lost. This is the thing. Everyone doing Warbori and Horimono, Shizai, and there's many other different names, 12, I think, mm. it's, is a protector of a cultrage, cultural heritage. Mm. You've got to see it like that, and you've got to do your best. And if you're going to do something as a, as a theme, please do us all a favor, everyone who's good at it. Just at least go on Wikipedia and read what you can find out about that person, because it's going to make such a big difference in what you're going to tattoo. I do it all the time. <laughs> Wikipedia. <laughs> You know, yeah, and books, and get those books. You know, buying books is buying buying knowledge. You know, because yeah, you yeah. buy your book. You know, and 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 I think that's a very good thing. Is because a funny funny thing is, I sometimes occasionally go out of my little uh, man cave. You know, out of my 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 my, my safe space, my secret, whatever you want yeah, to call yeah. it, call it the surf club. So anyway. And I go and I visit my friend in Oberhausen and um, Julian Gomez. He's in Oberhausen. He's got a shop called Iki Irizumi. Yeah. I know what was about it because it doesn't even have a sign on it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. How cool can tattooing be, right? So, yeah. And I saw your book on his table and he got it for Christmas. So I paged through the book briefly, you know, and it was like, hello, man, you know, someone actually took like a lot of stuff and put it into a book and it's making life easy for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, let's wait for a second publication then, you know. But but it's great because I mean, you know, at 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 the it's a broad majority of like a lot of subjects, right? But and of course you you know, you've got a it's it's a good indicator, you know, when you have like the pyramid and you have like the 10 like Bishop on 10 at the bottom, and then you have the Muors, and then you have the, you know, Danichis and then at the top you'll have the like the Norai. So there is a hierarchy, and it's very important that you know what to put on someone and why you do it. You know, yeah. I mean, that's the whole thing. You know, so yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Very, very good insight. Again, I'm, I'm just in awe here. This because this is very good stuff that not many people get to hear. So this, an, this video is an education right now for for many. That's that's fantastic. It was it was it was Sensei's will. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, that's great. That's Sense cool. And, you know, before I go on, I obviously also want to thank you for, for shouting out the book. That's that's fantastic. And I, I spoke briefly to him, too. So that's great that you're all also, you know, sharing and talking to each other. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So I want to show people, of course, uh, a number of your works. But before we do that, I think a lot of us have, have gotten a sense of, of what I'm about to ask. But maybe I'll ask you directly so we can get some... Well, Some more details in there, but what can you tell us about your colors and your composition style? Let's roll it up to uh, Shawa and uh, yeah. to the Shawa and and, and Heizai period. Uh, tattooing back in the day, with all respect, like I love it. I love looking at all of these old books I have, but they weren't. It wasn't like that technical standard. They didn't have tattoo machines. They didn't have all the pigments that are there now. You know, it, it all yeah. evolved. In the seventies, they were using gray leaves instead of green leaves. And I did that like a couple of months ago. I made a snake with a with a with a with a brown belly for a change, you know. And and then the flowers are all like in uh, cut because you have cadmium and tsuyan, right? So the one is the blue area and the other one is the red area. 
So all the flowers are like yellow, pink, and magenta, and you know, and the belly's brown, and everything else is gray, and the leaves of the flowers are gray. And it took me a long time to like, man, are you really gonna do this? Hey. Like this is gonna look so stupid, and people are gonna hate you for it. But the thing is. I think a lot of people do actually like it, you know. Uh, okay. The people who saw it around that person are like, yeah, well, I want to get that now as well. So it all depends on what you create. And going back to third cover generation, he was a creator of a lot of stuff, you know. Like his route of uh, Yoshi 1 and 2, you know, was was amazing, you know. So I do follow that school and um, I do use all the colors and I do like to go into detail, you know. I mean, mm. I think it just makes a more more of a beautiful design if you can take two colors of green and 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 different line line weights and all that sensei taught me how to do do uh tibori line work and he used to do it as well but he he started using machine you know for the lines and um i do as well you know like i i, I take i can if it's a small tattoo and you're coming for like something that's like a size that we can do i'll do it with line work but there there are people who do an amazing job of it you know like i mean in the in the nowadays, um, I can't say the name because it's always difficult to say names, you know. But there is someone living here in Holland, and he's also sometimes in Japan. And um, man, that guy is so unique, and he's doing stuff that n it's like he must be the best, you know. And it's it's great, you know. So um, yeah, I know him for a while, and he's uh, you know sometimes I'm I'm in touch with him, and he's 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 busy, you know. He's hard to reach, you know. Back, he's back. doing the real deal, but and he moved to Europe, you know, and he had to leave his family back, and he had his hardships with stuff, you know. But anyway, um, so the composition and style is, of course, um, I think when you look at like a whole story, like let's say like um, any kind of character, is like okay, so your image is going to be on the back, is going to end, your back is going to end. What are you going to do on the back of the thighs? Because you do want to do like. I'm really into doing it like the real way and I want to do like a common or cool. And it's like, yeah, okay, so you're going to do the turtle back and everything, but you're just going to fill it up with koi's and flowers every time. Yeah, I filled it up with koi's, but like, dude, the guy's in the mountains, got nothing right. to do with koi fish, man. You know, like, clean yourself up, you know? So, you, you know, it's like, could it not maybe be just like his hat? Did he lose his hat while he's having a fight? <laughs> you just maybe put his hat there and maybe some some travel luggage, you know? So sense was always about that, you know. Sense was always about like the whole thing. How is the whole bodysuit gonna look? What how's it like the different angle? Like let's say for an instance you take like Heiko, the demon slayer, and you uh you have four different ways to view a body. Of course, if I'm turning all around, you have a 360 view, but like you're gonna see my front, you're gonna see my back, and you're gonna see my arms. So of course you have like nine potential main main themes that you can have on your body like one two and then you have the ribs is three four the legs are five six seven eight on the calves nine is the back so are you going to put raiko on the back because he's the main figure of the story or are you going to take like maybe uh i don't know kintoki for an instance yeah because he had four retainers that lost the fight against him became his best guys and off they pop you know or are you going to take you know like what's the take who's going to be on the arms who's going to be on the back who's going to be on the front uh, are you going to split the front um what's what's your What's the area you come from? Like so, so if you come from Tokyo, you that's Kanto region. You're gonna do Tokyo style. So the background starts becoming much smaller and yeah. maybe sometimes wider because there are big changes in tattooing at the moment because the old generations are falling away. I think tattooing is gonna dramatically change, and uh, it's it's always a power struggle. You know, there's there's it's, it's power games. Um, man, it's it's crazy. It's it's really power games, right? So. Or you're gonna do Kansai area, you know, the people who come from Osaka. So, depending on which part of uh, Japan you come from, you're, you know, or let's say you go that these guys from 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 that group go to pray in that kind of shrine, so they're gonna get that image from that shrine tattooed on them. So, and then there's a color code to the shrine, you know, or maybe there's a city color code. Yeah. So the code that we work with um, is uh, at Chobu area. Nagoya yeah. area, it's the Aichi Prefecture, Gifu, uh, Gunma, all that belongs to that area. And what was very prominent from that area is that when they would do Nijobori, that's double carving, the tattoo on a tattoo, they would do that in blue. So, you know, what's your composition now? I do it in black and gray, but I follow that kind of, you know, kind of area code because uh, Sensei was doing it like in that kind of area code, you know. So... Yeah, it's a little bit different what I'm doing. Like I will take like 
from the middle of the vortex, you know, there is there is uh, there's stuff to be thought about, you know, how you build it up. And I do it all black, you know. I don't leave that. I don't leave one with gray. You know, some people leave it gray, and yeah. So it, it depends on how you want to have your wind bars look and all that. I don't know. Mine's p- p- specifically. T- don't look at that in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Rather look at that one. <laughs> but but uh, but uh, it, it's 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 just like how you're evolving, you know. I mean, there is a time difference. Like we drew and painted so much with Sensei that in the end, our stuff that we were doing went from that big to really small in pencil because that's the real way, and that takes for ages. But it's the real deal, and then you start getting into how it works with detail. You know, that's when, that's when you get details into your kimono design. Ah, kimono is wrong. I say garment design, right? And this is the thing that really bugs me because you have these amazing people from, let's say, a Taiwan, Korea and wherever they come from, right? And they're kicking out like 40 bodysuits a year. And it's like, how is that possible? How is this yeah. guy? Must be a workaholic. No, he's got 13 apprentices and they're filling out the wind bars and they're per- filling them out perfectly because they've got like, so many people who are interested in like beauty industry, they're all getting their bodies modified. They're all getting uh, tattoos that belong to them and whatever. And uh, there's a lot of stuff there. But it's it's like I met someone at a Japanese shrine and I said to him like, hey, man, it's beautiful work, but mm, you're walking around here in a shrine area with the uh, Japanese. And he's like, yeah, but I'm from Korea. I said, well, what's the difference? It's like you're walking around a shrine area. He didn't care for it, but he didn't have his second arm tattooed either. He's just having the one sleeve. And it was like, man, a beautiful sleeve like that should be accompanied by another beautiful sleeve, you know, but <laughs> but you aren't doing it. It's like, yeah, man, it's like such a pity, you know. I and mean, then that's the thing with like not having a sensei, you know, it's like you do the wrong garment design. Okay. Yeah. But then you have like an image where someone's holding like up a mirror and he's looking at the dragon and the dragon's reminded that it was once a beautiful woman. And then the dragon is actually on the right side. The guy's redrawn it because he's getting all fancy and he puts the dragon on the wrong, wrong side. So can I just ask for a second where the dragon is looking and where is the mirror showing? It's like, <laughs> and that's a pity. So, you know, before you do something and you think you're going to secure 20 appointments because, yeah, man, I'm doing this like amazing back piece, rather send them to someone you know who's going to do it well and and go get tattooed from people in your area who are good or fly to Japan and make it happen, you know? Mm. I think... Because we 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 have to save this culture, you know. If they can't do it in Japan, we're going to have to do it for them. Maybe that's leaning out the window a bit far, but we're going to have to do this all together. Yeah. You know, it's an interest. It's it's an obsession. It's a it's an addiction. Once you get into to to Warbori, um, I don't know. Just think about it. You know, you better run as fast and as far away as as possible. You know, because if if that claw gets around you, <laughs> you're not going to get away from it anymore. You know. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Awesome. So, all right, let's dig right into some of your works. I think we we heard in good detail about your style, your your colors, cool. and such. Let's see them in in action. Let me start by sharing my screen. All right. So, I think you've already watched a couple of the of the interviews, but basically, for those listening and watching, what I do is I'll let Gordon here, Kisari the second here, talk about the piece, and then maybe at the end, I'll have some some comments to that from my side. So having said that, please go ahead. Mm. Okay, so uh, ready, steady, go. Um, so of course you can see the second arm isn't completed and the arm that he has is from someone else. So on the one hand, you want to do something that's going to be what you're doing, but of course you can't just be all egoistic about it. And um, we were thinking about what we're going to do. So I chose this warrior for him. Usually in Japan, the master chooses that. Um, being second generation, I suppose that puts me in this kind of teaching position. And uh, it's good because the more knowledge you have about it, the better you can choose something for someone. So Genshogo here, he's like the the, the second brother. He's like short-lived brother. He's a Zoikoden warrior and uh, he's on a carp. Uh, the Nijibori here, all uh, Tibori and it's finished by the way. Um, but I thought when when we were in discussion before that, when you contacted me, it was like, should you choose or should I not choose? And I thought, well, let me choose some more recent stuff, not to keep it boring, but I can say more about my more recent stuff, and there's um, a, there's more there's more to tell about it than there is about the old stuff because the old stuff yeah. is going to be maybe just in the way, you know. Um, there's nice ones with that as well, but for me, it carried on. And the thing is, 
I don't publicize my work. Like you can't find it on Instagram. It's all old stuff on there. It's not. This is not even on my webpage. You know, I've. I've. I think. I think if you want to keep it to a secret level or a, a sacred level, then you know some stuff you just have to keep for yourself and the client. You know, I. I, I really. I don't even the word client again. I, just for the person who's receiving it. You know. So yeah. the Nuki Bori here, um, the design uh, w with Gakko Bori, but the image itself is done. Uh, with stick and the cherry blossoms are done with stick and it's practically just the the, the goldfish at the bottom they are for his children and his wife beautifully the black koi goes to the top which is the male koi the red koi is going to the bottom as he's as a female and then you know it's it's one motion it's um when you look at the design uh it's it goes it's it's a motion that goes like this and that motion you break up into smaller sections. And that's why when you look at like the thighs on the back, there's loads of stuff going on there. It's because the motion is broken up. But if you look at the motion in one thing, it's like, you know, that's where it goes out. That's where it goes out. That's where it goes out. Don't put too much water on the top because, you know, the client's going to the client's gonna drown in his image, you know. So yeah. um, that's that's practically a Zoikoden warrior, which I choose, chose for him. And, and, and yeah, he's brave, you know. That bloke is like, Man, you know, some people pitch up every two weeks and they just get it done, you know. So he's dedicated. He didn't leave me waiting with anything. Um, and it was it was big fun to do it with him, you know. It was big fun to do it with him. And as you can see, just because it's a Chinese warrior from the Zoikaden, we put in a dragon and a tiger for the for the tattoo in the tattoo, the Nijibori. So that gives it the tiger versus dragon. It's the, mm -hmm. it's the image that is, the, it's the fight between heaven and earth, you know. And if you want to do that, because it's a, I can't do that in in the Japanese version. You can't make a white tiger and a blue blue dragon, you know, because it's it's the rules were made somewhere along the line, and I'm not going to derive from rules that were made a hundred years ago, and I'm not going to color that dragon in blue, and I'm not going to make the tiger white because it's a Chinese design. That's just yeah. how it is. But it's the Japanese version of it, and that's exciting, right? So it's about um, in German we say Tugend. Which which characteristics this man has who visited me, and what I chose for him so that this will protect his back. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I really like this this picture. Let's just call it that way for for many reasons. One is you know I I like to see this one because you you mentioned that there's some work that you didn't do right, and I think as as, as a tattooer as as a horishi, it, it really goes to show a, a level of skill when you can marry other people's work. With yeah, that, your own and still make it look very good. So well, that's, that's that's one thing I wanted to call out. Another thing I want to call out is just look at the the patterns on on the robes here and and the tattoo within the tattoo. It's just fantastic. It's it's amazing. I always get in, one of my favorite things is looking at patterns on a clothing. Right, there's just something magical about it, and this is just very very good, very very cool to to see. And um, Maybe one last thing I'll call out because you already called out the motion, but I like the inclusion of his own meaning, right? The family you mentioned, right? With the the father figure, the mother figure, the the kids, the children, right? And then of course also you you carried on with the traditional coloring of Boy. the koi, which is very important and maybe not a lot of people know. So it's very awesome piece for, for many different reasons. So I put it up first because again, uh just just fantastic piece of work. Yeah, it was fun to do. It really was, man. It's good stuff. That's awesome. that, that's enjoy. That's when you can do stuff like this. This is when you're in the seventh heaven, you know. It's, <laughs> it's what that's a, this is our passion, you know. It's your, it's yours. It's mine. It's the person who comes all around the globe, no matter where it is. If you yeah. have a big name, a small name, it doesn't matter. If you're doing this kind of stuff, it's this is where where this is where this is the honesty. It's it's good. It's fun like that, you know. Mm. Awesome. All right. Let's see what else we got in here. Boom. Yes, when you see that big, it's uh, it's changing. Yeah, the thing is, when he's standing in front of you, it's all going to be much bigger. And then again, we have here. You see, the thing is, he's actually a priest. It's a it's a Zoikoden figure again, Busho. You know, you are Busho, and um, I think that was uh, yeah, he was like he got poisoned. So you know, there was uh, an outpost from the Zoikoden, and um, two of the figures from the from the robbers of the Lian Shamash. They were actually poisoning people and making them to mince meat to put them in their pies and to give other people. So when you read the Zoikoden, you are going to read about 
every stake of life, you know, every, it's, it's crazy, man. Anyway, they poisoned him, but he didn't get poisoned or he, he, he was tougher than that. So he killed a tiger on a bridge that is, um, uh, you know, killed 25 people. And, um, the background is like already there and it's, um, it's, it's uh, already gone on. And there's actually the hat we were talking about earlier on and his, and his luggage. I've, I've put that on the thighs, you know, so that you can yeah. see that it's like chucked down his luggage and lost his hat while he's punching. And now one thing about that image that you could change is you see he's a priest because he's got a chain around his, you know, like his waist, belly, shoulders, and yeah. he's got the, the dragons again, and he's got the tiger. And again, it's green and yellow and it gives a good balance. Especially when you put flowers around it, you know, like it's going to give those, those, I'm going to, there's going to be peonies around it. So it's going to give all that kind of, you know, it's, it's about the everything, you know, the big foot at the top and where do you put the Hori Mai, the signature, the Senja Fuda. I don't know, you know, like is a, I think a lot of, um, a lot of work that I do does not always have the Hori Mai and, uh, I don't ever put them be, beyond, uh, underneath the belt line and, um, I, I normally, what I do is like the traditional way, you know, you have your signature. In, in black and then you just carve the background around it and I think that's the best way to do it you know and you could because he's a priest so he he wouldn't normally be bald so you could put a bald patch on the top on the top fist you know there could be a bald patch around his hair you know like the top um that that could be but I don't know you know like this is practically what I did here is the old way of doing it and it's practically one to one um a version that sensei put on someone of, uh, on someone who came to him. As second generation, I am allowed to do. Uh, well, it's actually welcomed that you that you um, that you uh, copy your sensei as as until you're perfect at what you're doing, you know. And and I have that when I'm designing a tattoo, and it's not easy. It's like not like copy to go and all that. Like I prepare them. I prepare everything. Like you can see in the background, I prepare everything. I have hundreds of preparations of stuff because it's my homework that I can show people that I've offered to them. So. Um, You've got to prepare it. And then you learn a lot of things about that, you know, and before I start changing things to my own. But the thing is, when I'm preparing things, now not everything is like a one-to-one -one copy because I'm doing background and dragons and all that kind of stuff. You sometimes have to draw them on. And yeah, it's going to look like Sensei did them. But that is just the point, is that second generation should look exactly like first generation for a time being, and for a long time being, until you go your own way, you know. And for now, I'm kind of like happy with that because it's a big learning curve. We don't want to get in front of ourselves, you know. I think that's a very important thing about tattooing is that if you notice that you can't pull it off, leave it, you know. When people start getting fancy, like, yeah, I want that warrior, but man, uh, can we put like a, a trucker cap on him? It's like, man, I'm not putting a trucker cap on him, you know. It's like, it's not going to happen. So, and then you get forced to draw a trucker cap on it, and the trucker cap is not going to look correct and that's when you just buggered it up, you know. So when I'm drawing something that's not this image we can see here, anything, I'm drawing anything, I always have like sensei like over me. I still today, I have a connection, uh, you know, and I have this like, God, watch what you're doing with the eyes, you uh -huh. know, and, and, and what you're going to, how you're going to color it. So it's, it's everything about any kind of image and you've really got to watch it, you know. So, yeah. It's it's practically finished now, almost, and then we're gonna, you know, redo his arms, and that's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, but he's a great guy, man. This guy is like he used to be a roadie in a, in a in a in a in a, in a metal band, very right. famous band from Germany, and um, uh, I go to go to concerts sometimes with him. You know, he he gets tickets, he knows a lot of people, so we get tickets and we go and see all these amazing bands. It's fun. It's good to hang out with him. Yeah. Good stuff. That's awesome. that's awesome. That's awesome. And I really like, you know, you mentioned that, but the, I really like how the color pops and, and the color just, just, it, it just works, right? And I'm talking about the colors and, and the character itself, right? The, the dragons, the, the peonies, it just looks very, it, it looks right. That's, it's, it's just a way to phrase it. It just looks right. Uh, and, and again, I also like what you did there with the, the coloring behind your, your signature, if you will. I, I always like to see that those gradients right the, and how it evolves i think it's very very cool not many people do that and uh, well, yeah no it's a very powerful piece yeah go ahead thank you so much um uh in japan you actually don't say thank you very much someone says like something like <laughs> that say, no no not at all you know i was laughing about that a few days ago but 
uh, the the background of the Hori Mai of the signature field, um, that box can of course be filled with all sorts of stuff, you know. So, yeah. got different patterns that go with it. The color scheme of my Hori Mai is always black and red because Sensei did it like that. And um, we have like a whole bunch of like stickers, you know, like the the um, the Hori Mai stickers that we that we have, you know, that that Sensei um, got for us. I think there's one on one of the pieces that I have on the background. I don't know, maybe it's maybe you could, I think it's the blue one on top of my head here. Yeah. So, um, you know, you can you can use that, but that sticker is blue and it has an identification why it is blue, you know. Um, but Sensei's were always mint, and so I th you know Lars has his one in mint, and then I think Rick's one is red, you know. And I I um I have a, a Horikoi, the second Horikoi, also uh, from from Sensei, which he made, and that one's red, but otherwise I use brown brown a brown one, a blue one, and a and a and a, and a gray one. The thing is, how do you want to fit so much blue into a tattoo when uh, practically that's going to be the only thing that's blue up at the top. So we we have this, this thing that is like black, red, and uh, the background is always different. I think that is like the third or fourth one that I signed with a big Senja Fuda like that uh, with the Kisaragi logo, you know. Yeah. So Oops. I still have a lot of stuff to finish, which I'm going to do with people who have to have their boxes checked, you know, and you do it right at the end when you're finished with the, mm -hmm. with the, with the, with the, with the first layer, like the Nuki Bori, just the image, you can sign it then, you know, but before that's finished, you're not signing that work at all. Mm -hmm. Like, because that person might, you know, skip it. And then you see him five years later and he's had somewhere finished somewhere else. So, and it's got, you know, then, then it's got your signature on and, but the background isn't yours. So it's a disgrace in Japan to, change your tattooer when you go to someone and you're getting a horimono from that person you're staying with that person so clear first if you like that person or not that's what video telephone you know what video calls are there for you know just phone someone and say like hey how can we connect with each other you don't have to use that either but you can you know meet the guy at the shop and whatever you know and get in touch and see if that's the right person for you, yeah. you know? and that's like in our family i think that was like the thing you know i mean a lot of people didn't make the rocky road but uh lars is he's initially he's from from heidelberg and nope. um he lives in he lives in uh miami now and yeah, he, he he, he's married there he, he has children and everything he's highly academic like i mean for a long time i thought he's gonna be like we didn't know it you know but like we thought that he's probably going to be second generation you know because he's he's so close to what sensei is doing his tabori is amazing I, I don't know, you know, like I can't say how amazing, but it's 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 fantastic. Like it must be very very high at the at the top. I mean, we speak about who contacts him for information, so I know that he's talking to the whole everyone at the top wants wants information from Lars, you know. But he's very academic about it. He's very very academic. He's a very academic person, and so yeah, you know, it's like he's gonna he doesn't talk it over as much as I do, but like he gets down to it. And then he gets he gets that they, they get it done you know it's amazing so all three of us Rick Lars and me we're all different and um, there is a fourth a fourth person um, who didn't make the rocky road uh, Jay Jay Justine he had to he had to quit being one of us because um, his shop burned down and Sensei said to us like hey man you know it's like so we sent stuff over to Jay and Sensei amazing since i made like a massive box he sent books and tattoo machines and pigments and all, all arrived to jay's so jay being a, you know a big massive fan of of sensei like jay um he he had to he had to just leave it you know he had he had different stuff to take care of mm -hmm. you know if your shop burns down you're like you're in the dumps you know so yeah. so he's like our silent fourth brother you know i like him a lot he's a great guy you know we have lots of interaction with each other and he's someone who's also you know drawing his mannequins and um, he's always talking about like langer lines you know check it out langer lines you know and uh so how does you know like how do you how do you have stuff flow you know and and i'm always talking about we always have really good conversations you know it's great yeah no, that's awesome I, I i like the how, how you're mentioning you know the way you're describing it the way i'm interpreting is the very good family dynamics that you guys have and how you you're very humble about it and you compliment each other and you give give kudos where they're due that's that's very good to see it and, and hear in in somebody, right? So well, very good to to hear that, and it just goes to tell a lot about you. So that's great. Um, 
One more yeah. thing I want to call out about this piece before we move on to the to the next one is I also like the the Mikiri on the on the character here. I don't know if people are paying attention, but now they are. I really like what you did with the with the Mikiri here for for the figure. So awesome. All right, let's see what else we got in here. Yeah, it's half dragon and half phoenix, and uh, in the inside of his arm, you can't see it. There is like blue peony i put that because the botan when you put it on the forearm if you put it in yellow yeah it's gonna hold some time but they're all like placeholders you know if you have yellow and it goes out or orange it goes out and it becomes white it doesn't really matter because you've got this like hard kind of like layer of background around it so that gives the whole thing hold you know but um we discuss a lot of that this whole tattoo is like completely done with machine um it's really, really detailed, you know, and you could do it with Tibori and you'd probably need a little bit of different kinds of groupings, you know, but um, the flower on the chest is like done with, with uh, hand style and uh, it, it always goes to choose like how do you want that to flow into the into the background, right? So you can see on the background of the chest, you can see that it's coming in from the top and it's going to the middle and that's going to be because the other side is going to have the other side, you know, maybe also going up in the same direction. It all has to do with like hurricane. Now, it's a funny thing that we see this one because uh, the the this is the thing that I'm always complaining about when I'm doing Tibori is like the gray on this person is different to a gray on other people, right? And it's like it, this is the finding out thing, trying to find yourself through how to do it, you know, and how to get it in there, and it's it's extremely difficult, you know. It's a it's it's a half Chinese design, but the thing is, I chose it because. He's getting a phoenix on the other side and wouldn't want to have phoenix and dragon. The thing is that this one can be shown with peonies and botan and the dragon is with the chrysanthemum normally. So then you have summer and winter and then what you're going to put on the back. Yeah, so it's going to start becoming interesting. I don't know if you have to stick to this like floral code every time, you know, and say like, well, I'm being all strict and everything. Um, of course, there's a bunch of like loads of people who have done it differently. But if you know it and you're doing it and you can, you can find a way to make it legit, then I think it's okay, you know, as long as you know what you're doing. But if you're doing things yeah. that are wrong, then I think it's not so cool, you know. Yeah. Sure. But I but I like it. it's 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 uh the guy is um he doesn't speak to me, he says hello and he says goodbye when he's going. And uh I I I sort of like I don't know, I give him like the same that we're like we're talking now. I talk like all the time while I'm tattooing <laughs> him. And he I think he knows how my soul works because I'm always telling him like Man, and then this happened. Can you believe it? And I think he thinks I'm grumpy, but sometimes also make jokes, you know, under the belt line jokes, you know. So yeah, I think he he kind of like knows me a little bit better than a lot of the guys, you know. Uh, he kind of reminds me of myself when I was like younger. He's got the same kind of like physics and yeah, I don't know. He's quite enthusiastic about getting tattooed. So I think we're going to carry on. He was actually also in Japan for a long time. Well, wow. was in. Uh, Shinagawa, I think. Yeah, Shinagawa. I think Shinagawa or Kanagawa. And in, in one of the words, he was he worked there for a year. So he speaks Japanese, and yeah. So we back and forth sometimes, and sort of like teach each other and talk about ramen and udon noodles and whatever. It's like <laughs> you know what you need. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, interesting that you mentioned that. You know, it's machine work because if you look at the, I'm going to assume these are wings. If you look at the wings and you look at the pattern on those wings, that'd be very hard and very slow to pull off with with the Woody, right so it makes sense that you mentioned that that, that it, it is machine uh, yeah this looks fantastic very I, you, you don't see that many uh, w works like this outside of japan at least right so it's refreshing to see you having done it and i'm looking yeah. forward to seeing well if if we somehow manage to, to see the completed work that'd be very cool to see yeah. the, f the fun thing about it is I mean, you see, the thing is, yeah, of course we are doing Tibori. I mean, Lars is doing like, I think 90% everything is like Tibori. With me, I think it's like 40%. But the thing is, I also have a lot of stuff to take care of in the background. Like I'm yeah. writing to old friends of Sensei. There's loads of stuff I'm taking care of. I'm communicating with the mother and then I'm flying back to Japan. I still fly back. You know, this was the thing that when Sensei died, I, I was going to be... Um, it was it was devastating, yeah, because I was practically on the way to Japan. Because mm, a thing that a lot of people may not know, I mean, people do, but 
uh, Sensei was going to adopt me as it, uh, somewhere along the line. We knew that I was going to become second generation. So it was about how we are going to offer this to the world. And Sensei did want to adopt me as his lively son, right? So he wanted me to have the same surname and and you know um, his real real surname, you know, hey, not the one hey. you know from his music. And uh, I couldn't fly, yeah. So this just went, and uh, there's nothing that I could do about it. But as soon as the borders opened, I was the first to fly and say goodbye at the grave, you know. And and uh, it was it was a as sad as it was, it was also great to say goodbye, you know, because I felt really guilty that I couldn't go. And it really felt guilty, you know. And um, on that day when we went, uh, I, I accompanied mom. I always say mom too, because kind of like my my, my mom, you know, because he's he was like the father, yeah. Um, a lot of people came and they they were saying like, man, it's 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 great, you know, that you're doing that, you know. And I'm always sending parcels over uh, with all sorts of stuff, you know. And 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 you know, you got to keep them on their chocolate, you know, on their chocolate level, you know. But all sorts of stuff, you know, to different people, just keeping, you know, like I don't know. Sometimes I draw stuff and I'll send it over to someone who you yeah. know ran and got something yet, and it's it's cool to keep it going on like that because, like we said just earlier on, you can be that nachos guy, you know. But it's about this life. So if you're gonna be all fussy about sixty nine bucks for you know, and then buying something for another hundred and fifty, it's like man, maybe, maybe you just have to go work wherever you go and work. But then, and you know, I think a big part of being a holy she, um, as uh, just being a tattooer, it doesn't matter if you're into tribal or realistic, whatever, is taking part in life. You know, people come to you with like what they have, and the thing is, you have to take part in that, and you have to be a good person. I mean, if you're if you're if you got not too much good stuff to say, maybe you're in the wrong. I don't know. Whatever. At least we do it like that. You know, we we talk good stuff. We try to keep people motivated, keep the head up. You know, try and make people live life as good as it is. And I mean, I can see it here in Germany. You know, I see a lot of people are starting to struggle, man. I can see the poverty on the streets now. Okay. I can see it, and I can also see violence on the streets. I I have a history of that. I know exactly what I'm dealing with, and I know. I don't know, you know, don't pinpoint me for that. But I think in five or 10 years time, we've got a really big problem in this country. And I'm speaking about the whole of Europe. I'm speaking about everywhere. So we were a luxury, you know, a luxury experiment country once, but I think that is long gone. And I think people haven't woken up to that yet. Anyway, my uh, my occupation as a, as a tattooer is to do what I do as good as possible. There are people who do that in Japan. Um, one of them, I'm allowed to say the name because um, I'm friends with them. I'm dearly good friends with them. One of the first people who I got tattooed from when I was in Japan was Hori Kazu. And uh, okay. Hori Kazu Sensei is like a very good friend of mine. And um, I, I, like, I like him a lot. And he has a scholar also in Germany. His name's Harry. He's difficult to find. He has no social media. You can completely forget it. And uh, he has now become the... Also, the second generation uh, Hori Kazu. Hori Kazu, all the pictures that you know in the background that were taken with all these famous bodysuits with Hori Kazu's signature in the background on that purple towel in gold, was folded and it was given to Hari. And it's hanging in his studio and he's taking his pictures with it now. And Sensei said to him, like, I can't give you the name, but you are Hori Kazu, right? So they don't have this lineage of second, third, and whatever generation. When Hori Kazu dad died, Waka it means Wa. Waka. So it means wa means you're from Japan. So Japanese Horikazu Waka uh, he, it fell away and Horikazu Waka became Horikazu. And so now Horikazu has practically given Hari the name also Horikazu. So this is also outside of Japan and his, um, his work is man. It's like, yeah, every time he's, he's like, he's kind of like my sensei, Harry, because he teaches me every time I go. He's like, he's into swords and everything. He knows everything about martial arts. I mean, I've been doing it like a long time, forever kind of, but um, Harry is like, oh man, you know, you, if you're going to confront him and or anything he's got like is a short stick of 60 centimeters, like 30 inches. Wow, it's crazy. But it, it's a sport. It's great. It's fun, you know. So Sensei Horikazu, he does all that stuff with like really small needle groupings and he yeah. does it. He's, he's, de he's very detailed in his... Um, I've yeah, tattooed yeah. the past from him. And uh, Sensei uh, Hori Koi uh, Kisaragi was, um, he was friends with his father. So they also went to karaoke and they, they got up, you know, Sensei, Sensei Kisaragi was in Tokyo also on, on business sometimes, you know. Ah, that's all past. That's all in the 80s. It's all a mist. 
So yeah, you know, and 90s and whatever. So it's great, you know, and I mean, I just keep it going on like that because in the end, I think Tibori, yeah, cool. And I think Machine, yeah, cool. But I think sometimes it's also good to mix things, you know, like the flower in this one is like, yeah, it's Tibori. And I went over it twice because the first time it looked atrocious and I'm still yeah. suffering, you know, sometimes it turns out like super amazing. And sometimes you think like, man, what happened there? You know, it's like, yeah, so learning and we're going to, we're going to get it done sooner or later, you know, and that's awesome. Yeah. Very cool to listen, to hear about, you know, because I'm also a big fan of of his very powerful lineage in, in, in that family. And I, you know, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be searching like crazy for, for Harry now. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind and of the funny. They're not going to find him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's crazy because the dude's got like, I mean, I have also clients from all over, you know, but like, uh, Harry is like, uh, back in the day, he would get like tattooed from Mick from Zurich. So he's, you know, like the, the whole, uh, Japanese kind of European way of looking at things. And uh, Harry's got clients from all over, you know, and he practically just tattoos businessmen and all sorts of, you know, like people who have like, I don't know how they find him, man. I just don't know. I think it's just word to mouth, to be honest. Yeah, you know? yeah, man. And it's because Hori Kazoo is like, yeah, he's also in hiding, you know, it's like, you can't just phone him and say like, hey, bud, like, what's up? I'm coming over. It's like, it's not yeah. going to happen with all respect. So I think this is the thing where I really enjoy it, that people are out there that you just can't see all of their work all the time. What am I going to do? Am I going to? take photos of 40 koi sleeves I've done and put them all on the internet, how cool I am. Come on. I mean, it's ridiculous. So I think it's because it's, it's a mystic killer. Yeah. It's a mystic killer, you know, I, and I don't think it's anyone's business what anyone else has got tattooed, you know. It's, that's just the thing, you know. I mean, we could fly to Japan. Everyone's got everything covered up. And then you have people from the West who actually live in Japan Um walking around with all their bodysuits and being all like, ah. yeah. and it's like, man, you guys are disgrace. You know, it's like, that's not cool, man. So when I go to Japan, I'm wearing a long sleeve. I'm actually even wearing one now, you know? And yeah. I mean, you know, I got like full sleeves and whatever, and it's all old, you know, I've got lots of Japanese tattoos, but I've also got like old traditional stuff, you know, like old school or biomechanicals because when we started tattooing, it was like all about Guy Etchens and Marcus Pacheco and Aaron Kane, you know? And I can tell you, there's a number of Horishi out there that have got lots of, Tattoos from exactly the same names, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, so that was our route. That was, that was what, what got us into uh, doing what we do, you know, and I think just somewhere along the line, you find out where you belong. And I'm yeah. just definitely not that kind of a guy who says, mm. I want to get myself like a, like an actor sleeve, you know, and there you stand with your, I don't know, you know, your Pirates of the Caribbean sleeve. And it's like, man, it's dumb. It can be cool, but it's like, yeah, right on. You did that really cool. I mean, I want to do tattoos that a man would get. And I think that Japanese tattoos are manly. This is what I think about it. And this is the way it grew for me. And that's why, I don't know, like for me, I left tattooing. Like I don't go to anybody. I don't visit anybody anymore except for friends that I have. Sometimes you'll get to know someone new, but I don't particularly go to gallery openings. I don't go to conventions anymore. Um, and it's kind of, it's a pity because it's a place, it's a good place to meet people. But it's just, I think now that I'm doing that, what I do, I don't really have the time to travel anymore and all that. If I'm going, I want to go to Japan because I want to learn, you know, I want to travel yeah. to Japan as much as possible. It's a great country with one world and everything. And there's no need to go anywhere else, you know. Yeah. All right. Let's see what else we got in here. Well, all right. Yeah, so um, ground wishing jewel um, done with machine. Uh, the rest, it's all handcraft. And uh, what's important about this kind of imagery when you put it on is uh, red belly plates, red mouth, blue belly plates, blue mouth. Um, that's that's our take of it. Other people, other people might do it differently, but yeah. So there you can actually see that my you know the. The signature is just like with the, and it's going to be, there's going to be no Gakubori around it. There's going to be no, no, no background. This is going to be his only tattoo. And it's a thing that, um, a lot of people in Japan do. And it's also common here in Europe now, a little bit more is I'm getting one tattoo and I want to have my back tattooed. And that's the end of that, that story. Yeah. But a lot of people just walk around with the Nuki Bori and it's cool. I didn't put pupils in the eyes. Um, because I want it to be a little bit more mystical. I don't want to give it a direction in which it's going. Well, obviously, it's 
a rising dragon, but it's just got, you know, it's just the way it is. And yeah, it's super hardcore difficult to draw, you know, takes, takes too much time, but it's, it's what we do, you know, I mean, don't really matter because I mean, if you take 15 hours to draw a dragon like that, then you're still listening to music and walking around with your slippers and getting it done, you know, <laughs> looking, looking from far away on a coffee, you know, <laughs> finding out that, uh, it doesn't look good at all, and you really have to make sure that you uh, have to do a new design, and you yeah, have to right. postpone the appointment and everything. The guy's uh, is in is he's also in business, and um, I'm glad I could do it on him. Yeah, and he also marched through there like he would just pitch up, man. Boom, there he was. You know, yeah. Awesome. That was a really powerful, powerful piece. Obviously, huge, huge, powerful piece. I, I had the question. You know, was it Nuki body? Is it Gaku body? What's what? What's the final yeah. outcome? But this is a very powerful, yeah. powerful piece, very powerful dragon. You, you can't go wrong with with such a a powerful motif in, in the back, right? I think it's the best, you know. I like the yeah. dragon. Also, if we would have this discussion again about it being Chinese or whatever, I do like the snake, you know. If I know what I would prefer if I was to choose, but man, what goes above a snake, a snake or a dragon, you know, and yeah. uh, try to keep it keep it straight, you know. But there is a lot of Again, there's a lot of you know um, cultural stuff in like I don't know why is it why is it a yellow tooth why are the why are the claws blue why did you put chinbashi in the blue you know or why did you put that in the claws you know it's all that kind of stuff so you put blue in the claws why didn't you pick the do 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 the the horns in brown why did you do them why did you why did you do them in blue what that those are like kind of like family secrets and that's kind of stuff I can't talk about or can't, don't talk about but. I suppose we've got enough other information there, but um, yeah, you know, and then you make it all sweet and you put like pink underneath the the claws, you know, like underneath the the fingers underneath yeah, yeah. to make it like a little bit more subtle, you know, a little bit of pink yeah, yeah. into the ear, you know, to make it a little bit more, a little bit more Taisho area, you know, the, the, that area is very important, you know, so yeah, it's cool. I want to keep it a little bit more, the style is a little bit more vivid, so you want to keep it a little bit more vibrant with different kinds of colors and you know, just a little bit more going on than than you would have um, when the, the when they were practically all inventing this. You know, and um, I love I love that era as well. You know, I love looking at old books. I have such a number of them, and it's an addiction. But yeah, I think learning it from Sensei the way he did it, I'm continuing with it. You know, yeah. Oh, well, awesome! By the way, I also want to call out if if you look very close at the belly, if you look very close at, I'm missing the word uh, for it right now, but 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 the it's not the scales, but basically in the spine area, right? Uh, you, you see like this, these patterns or, or something, which I, I found very, very cool to see, right? Because if somebody looks at it, they might think something of it. But if you really look at it up close and, and you analyze it, there's there's a lot going on, even though it's just the dragon, right? So it's very cool to, to see all those micro details, if you will. And the thing is, it's a, it's a problem with photography and also in the internet. When you see these tattoos like from one meter away, Man, they're in the face, and then you can really yeah. see how subtle the grays are, yeah, and yeah. how they, you know, when you when you put them in with by hand, how how smooth they become and all that. The thing is, there's different adaptions to it. Like those brown spots that you can see in the horn is because it's trying to show that it's horn, but the oldest piece of the horn is the one that's actually at the top of the spike because what's growing out of the back is actually the newest. It's like a fingernail, right? What's new? What's old? So it's 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 about everything, you know. It's um yeah. It's 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 definitely you have to a lot of thought goes into tattoos when you're designing them and doing them you know it takes for ages and I'm not like a machine I can't I can't just you know the guy runs in and you didn't like oh shit I'm not ready for that appointment today like yeah. let's let's carry on with some flowers around here because you're just not ready to to carry on so while I have designed all these things I'm actually filling them out in pencil appointment before the appointment is and that's how all these A3 pieces of paper just become full of color because I'm actually looking at what I could do, you know, and you do find out that like, okay, I'm putting a Sayagata pattern on this bloke. That's like, you know, like the one manji, like a, like, a, I don't know, you'd call it a swastika, but uh, it's a tessellation. Yeah. So I'm yeah. a manji and then it's Sayagata pattern in the end. So you see if orange does go with black and does orange go with yellow or how's that going to heal with time? Do, or should it do the line work with purple? Oh yeah, well, purple holds quite well. So let's, you know, this kind of stuff is, interesting and then you start finding out okay and you want to balance it because when you have a picture in artwork uh, you have 
12 sections of the picture and you want to have every kind of color that's in that tattoo, you want to have it return to the whole image in each of the 12 sections. So if you, you take two lines going down the spine and three across his back, all the colors reoccur. This is mm-hmm. typical for art, right? So I don't know, you know, it's just, yeah, that kind of stuff. Awesome. The, the Japan, the, the Italians have a word for it. I think it's called uh, Churusio, Curusio, Churusio. Yeah, I don't know. It's the 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 yellow and the the the, the lightness of how a shadow would fall in a piece. What you would see from Da Vinci and from mm-hmm. Caravaggio is the light and the dark areas. I think they call it Churo Chiu. I, I, let, <laughs> forget it. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, if you type in the letters I've just said, it's going to kind of pitch up <laughs> yeah, yeah. that kind of contrast range. And I try to use that on tattoos. I mean, I, that's part of the route, right? So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Let's move along here. All right. Very, very powerful piece. Go ahead. Okay. So, tiger standing on stone because a tiger goes 4,000 kilometers through Siberia without getting tired. It's an it's a It's a yellow tiger. It's a Chinese image. It's fighting with a dragon. It's the fight between heaven and earth. And before we knew that we were going to tattoo this, years ago, you can actually see it like it's got the old style with like some of the wind bars on the arm. Uh, the Mikiri goes just in gray. You know, it's like that old Nagoya style. But this this tattoo is like, it's, it's a cover up and it's years old, right? But it's green. And the tiger on the other arm is yellow. So I can't put a white tiger and a blue dragon and make it look all Japanese. Once again... We do have a Chinese design here, and we did do our best to make it look Japanese, of course, through the background alone. It's already Japanese, but it's it's that interaction. It's that second of interaction, right? So uh, there's no use doing that kind of a back piece with a dragon looking in that way and the tigers looking in that way. It has to be. So the uh, I suppose that a lot of you are probably saying, like, well, then why is there no back bamboo in the background? Well, the thing is, um, for uh, different reasons, right? I mean... You could put bamboo in the background, but there is a lot of green in, in the dragon already. I wanted to make the dragon black, but uh, because the dragon on the arm is already green, I think it's 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 kind of like you can't go through your own ego all the time to produce cool stuff. It just has to fit to the rest, you know, and you live with the failures that you make, you know. You are just as worth as much as the failure you just committed. That's your worth. So, you know, you woke up, you wake up every morning trying to do things as beautiful as you can, but you do know that you have a long way to of learning curve in, in the world. No matter how good you are in your profession, be a good person first. Don't be difficult to other people, you know. Train to be to persevere and to try and be not don't be that natural guy. Be someone who's <laughs> patient. So that tiger is standing on um on rocks and um at the bottom you can see bonjis. It's yeah. Monju Buzatsu and the other one I think is rat. I might be mistaken, it could also be dog. Anyway. Those are, of course, the children once again, and we take the bonjis. Now, not everyone's allowed to tattoo a bonji. It's a special symbol. Um, it's very sacred, and it has something to do with what year you're born in. So um, we, we chose, again, peony, you know, and uh, there we are. Yeah. So it's part and part, you know. Some of it is Tibori, and some of it is just machine to speed things up, and it just goes the way it goes. The yellow flew in there. I'm amazed. I'm really happy about that. But um, yeah, it's a long way. As you can see in that piece, the gray is much darker than the gray that we saw in the one that was before that. And it's yeah. like, don't ask me. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> we, we're getting there, you know. And it's 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 also every session, you know. Like it, the gray in every session is also like it's also sometimes different because you're rubbing for a minute or two less, you know. And every every time you gray, it's it's more or less it's like that thing there. But if you look at anybody's bodysuit, the whole thing is always evolving. There's no thing, such thing as like it's all perfect. It's all evolving, all of the gray. And in some areas, it just goes in better in the body than it does in others. I mean, you look at the side of uh, of, this, of the ribs, you know, where, where, where the clouds are coming down. It's like, yeah, man, you just try and put some, some I don't know. I don't want to feel. Sometimes I got the feeling I talk too much, you know. But the thing is, that was the thing that I said before we started. It's like, I'm not sure if I should do it or not. I agreed to do it. And um, and you asked me, you know, and I said, like, let's do it. So 
it's my obligation to step in Sensei's shoes right there and to give the world at least a good way of how things should be because that was his will. You know, yeah. he was he was a great person. He There's a book about him with lots of designs. I, uh, we, we presume it got bootlegged, but uh, that book would have never hit the market if, uh, if he would not have got sick because hey. he was always against showing too much and whatever, you know. But in the end, I think it became this kind of thing of Sensei wanting the world to know how it is when you have cancer. And so he accompanied his every day on online and was kind of cool. Yeah, it was great. You know, it was like, hey, Sensei, you just keep it up, you know. And it's the spirit. It's the spirit we all need. Yeah, I mean. No matter where you are, no matter how tough you are, you all need it. You know, yeah, we yeah. all. So, yeah, that's how it shows. But you can see how the, the, the rock that he's standing on changes direction to go to the left hand of the, the buttocks area. And that's because it's sort of like a rock that comes out that you can see that he's standing. That's why the dragon's lower leg is just coming out from beneath the ledge, you know. that That's what made it possible to carry on with the dragon at the bottom of the of the torso, you know. That was like the most important part of the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah very, very powerful piece. Uh, again, many things I like about it in no particular order, but I think these are some very beautiful peonies uh, you did in there. So, so kudos on that. I also like how the, the tiger is biting into the dragon. You usually see, you know, a lot of just the, the tiger growling or, or whatever, right? But here we see that the tiger biting into the dragon is pretty, pretty cool to see in, in action, if you will. Uh, just, just very powerful and beautiful piece at the same time. And then I also like how you mentioned that there's a personal meaning attached to it, right, with the with the family association there with the with the bungee. Uh, I think so. it's like legit to do it like that, you know. Yeah. And you need that interaction because if they're just smiling at each other, then there's no fight between heaven and earth. Yeah. Because we all live on heaven. We all come from somewhere, you know, and we're all going somewhere. So this is a very important theme also in Japan. I mean, the Japanese version would probably be the taka and uh, the heavy, you know, the snake and the... And yeah. the and... But anyway, I mean, I, I do... When people come to me with like their idea, I'm not like the person's going to be like, well, let's do the Japanese version because I'm, you know, like I think somewhere along the line, I think it's okay, you know. I mean, the thing is, there is also a big difference. I spoke to Sensei about it a lot of times, you know, and it's also that some of us here in the West sometimes feel ridiculous with this whole thing because we can't speak perfect Japanese, you know. I don't I don't want to get too far out of the margin, you know, but when you see uh, integrate tattoos like, um, let's say uh, Yushi Takai, you know, like Horikishi, okay. he's following a route, you know. And I've met him multiple times. He's a great guy. I don't have my Yushi tattoo yet, but I have to wait for seven years because Sensei, of course, went from us. And so uh, seven years, you have to wait until you continue. But um, when you see his way of doing it, you know, there is a, there is a certain route and a certain style, you know, and that's very interesting. And I think he's in a different position than I am. I mean, I'm second generation. I'm proud of it. And it would be difficult to convey on the internet right now how proud I am of it but it's I'm very proud of it and there is a certain kind of philosophy that if I were to hear the one or other certain thing it would be very difficult for me to keep myself back I would probably be I don't know I think I was hanging around with Sensei too, too much you know he had the samurai spirit anyway I'm still not Japanese so there is a difference it doesn't give me the opportunity to not convey my tattoos as a non-Japanese person because otherwise just shut up and quit and just go work for the town council or whatever you want to do. But if he's doing things a certain way, he's allowed to do it that way because he's Japanese. So we have to keep that. You know, there's a lot of people in Japan who, man, there's no media coverage for all of them, you know, and they're getting it from all the sides. You know, everything's being banned and everything, you know, like I know when I'm in Tokyo where to go swim. And we go swimming with like, you know, and you see other people swimming there and that's a, a cultural heritage because I know where to go and, and and see stuff that I can learn from, you know, and you, you sit with people and you look at them and you, and it's, and it's great, you know, like it's great. But these guys in Japan, I don't know, you know, I wish all of them could speak English because then they could be in an interview with me, uh, with you, you know, and, and not, and not me, you know, like it's, it's, it's a pity in its own way, you know, and there's a bunch of them. There's a few people let's speak a little bit of English and I hope that they find their way to get interviewed from you, you know, but not everyone wants to do it. You know, some people just want to be in the background background. 
And I guess I just became that person, you know. And it's people like him that helped me on the way, you know. This guy's a businessman. He works for a massive a massive crane company. They hire out cranes. It's probably the, one of the biggest in Germany. And yeah, you know, so he also pitched up every two weeks. There I am. Boom, let's do it, you know. Great person. I, I like him. And I and we meet all the time. We go out for dinner. We always go to the Greek together. And, 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 and we talk uh, positive stuff, you know, positive stuff. <laughs> As positive stuff you can find, but he's like my positive man because every time I meet him and his wife, they don't have this worry about what what could happen or whatever in the world. You know, it's like he's always like, yeah, yeah, well, you know, whatever. You know, that like I'm having that and that today, and then we're gonna have it, and they get wine and everything. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to do some jokes under the belt line again. You know, yeah, it's fun. Mm, that's great. That was great. In fact, what, what, one of the questions that I'll ask later on. Is exactly about that, which I'm hearing you, you have some great interactions with your, I know it's, it's sort of a taboo word right now, but uh, the clients are, or the customers, right? So it's very, very good to, to hear that. So before we get to that question though, let's look at what we have next year. I think this is the last picture that we're going to be talking about. Will... So please go ahead. Okay. So when you're looking at what you want to design, um, at least I do it like that. He's got Bukiri, like he's got a straight cut. Now, that's nothing fancy. It's not uh, something that you just put on someone. You really have to, as we said earlier on, find out, is that person someone who could wear that, you know, or not, because it has something to do with ideals. This person has very strong ideals. He's Ukrainian. He speaks beautiful German, but he's living in Bosnia now. And yeah, I suppose he got some background. So, you know, um, blue chrysanthemum, um, I chose that because... Uh, that's what you get when you break up with someone and the yellow chrysanthemum has also a different meaning. So you've got colors of chrysanthemums and peony can also have meanings. I don't think you have to get into depth with it because I try to use them for balancing something. So I do have customers who only have red chrysanthemums, you know, and, and, and some only have red and orange chrysanthemums and some have like load of them. And I think when you're trying to do shower period, uh, um, third carbon generation, root you know um i'm trying to understand it because uh sensei always said to me like look at chinese painting you know and when you look at like ukiyo-e or in osaka you have the kamigata which is the same as ukiyo-e it's like floating world is from edo and the kamigata is from um from osaka you're gonna find a whole new range of like hey i'm gonna make a career of this yeah someone's gonna do it but i mean it's not there to be used one-on-one -on -one. i mean draw your own thing right but it's nice to know about what what means but you also have to uh sometimes just use it to balance things what's interesting about the way i did it is is um you can see on the on the on the side on the chest side on the um, i'm going to keep away from left and right because um on the one where the yellow flower is on you can see from the top the wind is going in and you can see that same wind coming across both of his shoulders and going into where the where the blue one is which means when you're actually trying to evolve, it's all one evolving hurricane. It's coming okay. in like this. So the wind has one direction. So the question is, is how is it going in and how is it going out? Like when you draw that on someone, do you draw that from the center of the peony or do you draw it from out to in or do you draw it from in to out? So these kind of things are very important. And it's also stupid stuff, you know, it's like, there is so much stuff that Sensei would correct me on and then uh, you do it wrong again and he would say like, draw the same picture again and I draw the same picture again. He's like, what did you find out, you know? So we we did at one stage find out like the more we drew, the more answers we're getting. And I don't know how high Lars and Rick's pile is, but man, I mean, Lars was like, he was like going crazy, you know? Like he did like all of these things in like, uh, we say monochrome, which is like uh, just the black and gray. It's... Yeah. Um, it's it's colors body is the Japanese word for it. So and he did so many dragons and all sorts of stuff just in colors body and it was like man, dude, I sh maybe I should do that, you know. <laughs> so we were seeing how things work and it's cool because when you do them in black and gray, your customer doesn't see how it's going to look when it's when it's colored because one guy's not going to like blue, so he's going to he won't decide for that design because there's blue in it. Yeah. Well, come to the things like man, I don't like blue. Do you think we could change that for orange? No. You know. So it's like yeah, it's like that. Yeah, I don't know. But it's 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 the sense of direction, you know. I think it's the direction where you can take it, you know. Like I mean, if you see that guy's nipples, 
you can see that that cloud when the blue well, let's take the side of the blue chrysanthemum but you can see that that cloud is still able to be cut just before the nipple and the next one's going to go around the nipple and that's how you build in the nipple into a bodysuit and the same with that with that um with the with the with the rock yeah, yeah. is you can still take that rock into a direction that goes out and you can build it into the bodysuit so there's multiple things that you have to be careful on you know it's like how to balance i don't know you know how far from the neck and how far how how wide is that river of life the munawari going to be you know i think that's what gives this occupation the most credit for being the most difficult one is japanese tattooing because you can do what you want to do you can't do what you want to do but i mean there is a difference between you know doing an owen jensen design and going all paul rogers or seller jerry or whatever and you can do things like the way you do them and i mean there are specific rules as well but in japan you just buggered it up i mean i see like a ton of people who know probably even more than i do in the background seeing like yeah it's a cool interview gordon but man you should have done that that that's wrong you know <laughs> and it's like yeah I, I i watched some interviews from other guys who have been here you know and uh, on your channel and and yeah i i can point out things about everyone and, and someone's going to point something out but that's what it is it's being on spot and trying to do it better for next time so mm -hmm. you learn every day not just as a tattooer but also as a person it's about being good you know mm. yeah, that's yeah. fantastic yeah a couple of things in here that, that i do want to call out. obviously the movement the movement is it's incredible i also like the placement of of the chrysanthemum right you see some behind the the clouds some behind the, the rocks or the stone so that's pretty cool and then i also want to call out something that i've heard repeatedly as i talk with with many tattooers with many morishi and it goes back to what you mentioned about the addiction or, or the love, to, to put it in a nicer way, for Wabori once you really get into it. And that is that when you're doing the work, you should think about it as a bodysuit, right? And not only because it will help you make sure that the flow, like you mentioned, is, is right and so on and so forth, but also because something that those that are tattooed really understand is that, you know, you might start with a sleeve, maybe just one sleeve. But then once you're done, oh, suddenly you want another sleeve. And then you got two sleeves, and then suddenly you want to, you know, and it, it's a never-ending thing. So that's why it's important to have the the bodysuit in mind as a, as a tattoo or as a, a, as a horishi, right? So that you can make sure things fit in place if they don't start as a bodysuit, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. You don't want right. to do, run with your old fa failures, you know? Mm. All right. Let me stop sharing. I think that was the last of them get back to the main man over here and you know this next question we've gotten many many cues and, and clues into it obviously Odi boy he said i'm first generation was obviously a very very big influence in your own style but i'm wondering what about other sources of inspiration or influence in, in becoming who you are um i think that my past has got a lot to do with it you know growing in south, south africa I know that, like, I, I suppose it just happens to every country, and then it's like, ah, oh, yeah, well, those guys are from South Africa. But one thing was a, a fun thing about people from South Africa is they love to get employed everywhere. I mean, people love to employ them because they're really hardworking. And we all were growing up in discipline, you know. So that was a big thing that helped me with uh, living through my time with Sensei. Because, to be honest, if Sensei was still there and I was living in Japan, maybe I would be missing just going to leave it like that you know and you have to be really disciplined i think that my upraising in south africa it was not always easy but uh and johannesburg was very tough back then already like johannesburg was very tough in the 80s i've seen stuff i cannot speak about because it's going to be yeah the guy's a liar anyway and i think that's what become what you become you know like the first guy who i apprenticed underneath he made me a better person you know my parents um I, 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 it just depends on who you grow up with, you know. And then when I became a tattooer, of course, you know, I don't know, you, you become a loose mind and you become someone who's going to be outgoing, you know. You know everyone in town, so you get invited to parties and it's going to be cool. But I was always a little bit, I don't know if I wanted to always go to parties. Like, I, I'm a party animal, you know. But the thing is, 
<laughs> don't believe him. But the thing is, um, I would rather be at home trying to do something, you know. And I mean, that's like, you can't compare 30 years ago with like 10 years ago. Yeah. Because I think like now I'm 52. So I think like the last 15 years, I haven't gone to, I've gone to like 10 parties. I'm always at home. I'm a hermit man, but I'm always looking at books. I'm always looking in a Japanese book. What's the word for, you know, and, and I'm always trying to make it, you know, like be on that, trying to make it better. And I think that's what you do. You know, you try to be as good as you can, you know, and that's what you become. I mean, when you are seven years old, the last cell in your body has changed. And if you're 14 and 21 and 28 and so on, you're not going to be the same person you were before because you change. And your thinking structure changes, especially if you're that intensely close to someone who, I don't know, you know, was a holy she and he had his background and whatever. You start changing also and your dynamics change, you know. Same. So, of course, when you look at like, uh, you can look at the past, you know, and of course, also my friends that I grew up with, they also influenced me into who I am, you know, like a lot of my friends back then, they would get tattoos from me. Now they're all full of stuff. They're all 50 and they don't want to get any tattoos. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> if now with a, with with what I know now, I was 20, <laughs> I, would, I would be rocking it, you know, but but we aren't. So it's tough. It's tough in any kind of uh, occupation, any kind of tattooing. It's always tough. You're always looking for new blood because you know that those guys are going to be full. Bring me your brother, you know, bring me your brother, bring me your brother, sister, bring them all, you know, <laughs> uh, your brother, sister would be my sister. Anyway, so that means you've got to get as many people going as you can, right? And it's always tough and you're always drawing and you're always listening to something and looking at something. And yeah, now I've got this like new hobby, Warboripedia. I'm trying to look at all the interviews, but it's stealing my time. So <laughs> I'm kind of glad that I'm in the like first, more of the first interviews because when there's a hundred interviews, maybe people are going to start picking and that's the problem is they're not going to look at mine. They're going to look at Holy yeah. Kitchen's one, you know? So, <laughs> so yeah, because some people are prominent, you know, I mean, do, yeah. you, you have to, do, when you look at the route, like, um, uh, uh, Yushi Takai Horikishi, he did a lot for European Japanese tattooing, right? So uh, he has to be mentioned, you right? He's when I bought his book, I went to Amsterdam and I went. Uh, I went. To, uh, I think he was working in Amsterdam at that stage. I not. I think it was in Amsterdam. I went and bought the book, and it was like now all the paintings are missing. I don't know what happened to them, but man, the wall was full, and I knew, oh man, you need that wall full. Sensei hated mo. He hates the wall when it's full. For them, it's just like one picture of whoever, you know, and then the room was filled with pictures of certain people um, who he admired. And um, yeah, you know, so uh, third cover generation's picture is in Sensei's uh, place where he works, you know, and so were another uh, uh, another people, you know, a lot of people, uh, famous tattooers, even from the USA. Um, and I remember this one picture of a woman fully tattooed and she's in one of those famous books from kombucha and since i looked at sensei i'm like sensei this is the wife of so-and-so and he's like yes this is a woman and she's got like this really <laughs> crazy image of someone killing someone you know so there is certainly a, a, some kind of history you know and she comes from a different family and it's like Whoa. wow you know but these people hang in sensei's room so he kind of somehow had a connection to all of that you know to these people and it sort of like becomes you, you know? So I think when I bought the book of Hori Kishi, it was like, that was kind of school. That was kind of school. Hori Kazu was kind of school, you know? Man. Um, Hori Yoshi the third was kind of school. Definitely, you know? I mean, yeah. damn, you know? And there's, who am I forgetting, you know? Gifu, yeah. He was amazing. You know, he's, he was very good friends with Sensei. Uh, maybe I'll tell a story about him and Sensei some other time, you know. But the amount of stuff that he painted, man, I wanted, yeah. to, I wanted to do it like that as well. So it becomes <laughs> inspiring. And all of a sudden, you don't care about too too much about contacts around you, you know. I mean, my friends, they're all, we all keep contact, but we see each other like five times a year. And the people who are go, uh, who I'm around with, I'm tattooing them. I'm, I'm seeing them more frequently, you know, because they're just around me and then they love coming, you know, because we talk all sorts of different kinds of stuff, you know. But these are people who who make you, you know, to to what you are, you know. Hori Kazu, especially, you know, is like the best guy ever. He's, he's a really great person. He's fun to be around. He's always, I don't know, 
he's 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 a different kind of he's a he's a different kind of tattooer I've ever met. You know, him and him and Sensei, Sensei of course number one. You know, always. But Hori Kazu, I love him. You know, he's also a great guy, and he he teaches me, and he knows that like I've had a master. But to get new information from someone who's not your master, uh, uh, forget yeah. it. And he does. He you know when we see each other, it's it's fine. You know, so I think you I keep. I keep looking at the root, you know, and I think that's what's, um, I think that's what's important, you know. Yeah. You know? Awesome. Yes, that's fantastic. And in fact, you also hinted at, at something else that's important and that I see a lot in in Japan and that, of course, in, I'm just going to call it the West, uh, basically everything else. In the West, there's some mix, right? Um, but I, I think we got some, some hints as to your answer to the next one, and that's around your view on the Orishi client bonds while you're yeah. tattooing and then after the work is done. No. Yeah. Before I answer that, I was that's why I went into myself for a second. I still have to I was thinking should I mention it or not mention it. Um the last question you said also who to made you. Yep. I went to Japan the first time. I got tattooed from uh Gunma Horimasa. Mm. And maybe it's not correct to use the term and uh and the name because since in him had a sort of like a falling out yeah, yeah. but um, he was at Sensei's grave he visited Sensei's grave he was as brave as that to go there and to say goodbye and um, he was also uh, and I think for me that cleaned the slate yeah. because I told, I told mom about it and uh, she gave me she gave me um, she gave me tools along that he made for Sensei so I, I have them now and um, he was also a massive influence Ori Masagunma is also a name that should be mentioned. And he was very highly inspired from uh, the Hori Koi era, the Carp Carp era, and of course also from, you know, Yokohama third generation. So, yeah. I have to mention it, but I have to say it, I have to say it quietly, you know. I, I really have to say it quietly because, um, yeah, you know, yeah. But he was also a very big influence. And, and I'm glad he went to the grave. And to answer your question, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I hang out with 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 all of them. You know, they they actually they phone each other because someone's moving. It's like, hey man, can you go and help me? And the last time someone moved, they didn't even actually ask me because they're like, oh, we thought you were busy. And I'm like, you guys can always ask me. You know, it's like, uh, what's up? You know. But usually once a year, it's a thing we I didn't ever talk about. Now the thing is, this is the special thing about the interview I have here today is. I've done an interview. I've done plenty of interviews, but I've done an interview for a uh, fan scene. It's become a big thing. Tribal publishing from my friend Patrick Kitzel. And he's uh, upstate New York somewhere in Syracuse. I think he's moving. Uh, anyway, so he used to have a fan scene, and I did like a a big interview in that, but it was all typed and everything. And we spoke about aliens and 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 we spoke about spiritual stuff and all that. And after that, I thought like, yeah, you know what, man. Whatever. I don't think I'm I'm done with it. So I don't need any podcasts and I always deny it. I don't want anything. I'm not taking part in them. And then we discussed it in the family, Lars and Rick and me, and it was like, yeah, but look, you know, don't be like so secluded. I mean, do you do you want to work? Are you not gonna be found? What is are you gonna open a restaurant soon or what? So so I said, like, yeah, well, okay, <laughs> it's then then it's a good idea, we're gonna do it, right? And um and and yeah, that's that's how it is. So I said like, okay, so then let's speak freely and let's speak easy and I'll talk about some stuff that I don't usually talk about because you won't find on my Instagram or anywhere anything else. Probably by the time people watch this, it's not that that media is not even going to be there anymore. But the thing is, um, I, I go out. I go out once a year. I take all of them on a on a Gaudi, you know. We go out, we go on canoes, we go, we go doing some stuff, you know. We we go out on canoe trips, we go out on uh, climbing, we go out, we do a barbecue. I do this because I do this, but everyone has his own way of doing it, right? I do it with the guys who have the most appointments in that year. And sometimes if someone from them cannot come, I'm taking some of the old, uh, some of the old goods along, you know, I call them old goods, you know, <laughs> <laughs> taking some of the guys who are full, uh, I take them along. And it's also cool for the you, the new guys to see, oh shit, yeah, man, yeah. He's, he's got like, He's got both his sleeves done, man. Wow, I want both my sleeves, you know. It's like, that's kind of cool to to do it like that. And we have a good time. And I, I sense it would always say like, hey, man, 
it's not called a, it's not a client it's not a customer it's someone who comes to you you know it's a ritual between two people it's something special yeah it's a ritual between two people it's a very good way of uh, expressing it you know because there's energy involved and there's there's a uh, all sorts of stuff involved right. you know I, I like it i enjoy the, all the guys and 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 um it's for everyone to choose you know i have people who are in the middle of a back piece and haven't phoned me for half a year and i've got this like question mark on my face you know and then and then you write them something and there's no answer and then three weeks later yeah. comes an answer like yeah yeah well i'm busy with work and all that you know and they keep themselves secluded i have that in my history as well you know but you always have the famous five, you know. You have always like the famous five guys that are around you, and they're always like, "Sensei, Sensei." They even come to me and call me Sensei. It's like, come on, don't be ridiculous, guys, you know. <laughs> but 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 it's like, yeah, you know, like I think it is good to pass all that on, ethics and morals. Do you pass that on to your client, man? Yeah, the no. whole world needs it. It's not about you. It's about, you know, some of the guys who come to me. They're like, I don't accept. I don't accept clients. <laughs> I don't accept people to come to me too much that are under the age of twenty-five anymore. I'm just kind of like, there. there's always a problem with money and then they can't do it. And then there's always like a big problem with the gaps of how things carry on. I want to, and the thing is, I'm also not 30 anymore. I'm 50. So my clients that I'm usually tattooing are all older than like 35, 30 at least, you know. And if someone's young and he's really got the will, I will do it. Like I'm all about it. Like, but the thing is, uh, I think when you're interviewing them for the first, like, how are we going to get together and how are we going to do this, like the first, you know, um, what's the English word for it? Uh, um, consultation. Consultation. Yeah. When you have the first consultation, you, 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 you can already notice that, like, a lot of people from the newer generations don't have this, like, uh, stick to your guns kind of stuff. I don't yeah. know. They're, like, lost, you know? It's like, yeah, well, you know, if he's going to be that strict, then I'm going to go and look for... I'm gonna go to Charlie, you know, because the the it doesn't seem so strict around him, and then they're gonna bugger him around, you know. It's, for me, it's like the thing is, I don't mind taking my time for people, but if I have time for people, I want to use it sensibly, Amen. because I also never have free space and I never see my friends. So of course I want to see my friends, and I can't do that if I'm there for everyone all the time. So of course you have to say politely, you have to say no to a bunch of projects, you know. And even if that means that someone is not gonna get your back from him, like I say that sometimes. I say like, hey man. I can't do you. I've said it to one guy just recently. I said, I can't do your sleeve. I'm not doing it. I'm not I'm, I'm not in your theme. I can't do it. And I'm going to ask Frederick. He comes from France. He goes to uh, to Julian's shop. A uh, really good, great tattooer. And and, and, some, and then he's got to do it. And you know what? The thing is, they all have family, right? So, I mean, yeah, and then you pass on a project, two or three. It's going to go to their family. So, everything for the friends. I think that's fair enough, you know. I think you have to be, you have to be, you have to fight that. That yeah. you have to own everything and be the guy who's gonna tattoo those guys back. It's like, no, you don't have to be. You you can you can say to someone, sorry, I have to tell you that I am just not the right person. I have to reject you as a client, you know, or the person who comes to me. I still have to practice that, right? But but I think you know my client bond or the people who come to me bond. It's it's I'm fond of it. And I think it's what you make out of it, you know. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I go to Japan, everyone gets something brought along. And sometimes it's a sticker for him, and sometimes a tenui for him, and sometimes he gets a daruma, and all sorts of stuff, you know. I've also brought books back where I know, like, hey, man, I'm never, ever going to get hold of that book again. And I give it to someone, you know. And I think that's how the world should be, you know. If you see someone who's thirsty for something, yeah. you give him a water, man. You give him a water, you know. But clients with... With, I mean, the thing is, it's a two-way road, right? So without someone, uh, you know, the guys pitch up, they're all fond of you. They're all respectful. Yeah, I don't know, you know. If someone misses his appointment, I don't go all crazy, you know. It's like, yeah, yeah. there's a reason for it, you know. Someone had to drive his dad to the doctor or... And and you have like, wow, I've got four hours off. What am I going to do? Wonder what I'm going to do. Okay, quickly go down and make some needles, you know. Or do something for your blog or keep it going, you know. And it's there's so many tasks. It's unbelievable how many hours the day doesn't have, you know. Mm. That's, uh, that's great. That's great. Um, you know, it's it's always nice to hear about that connection because, like you said, it, it's a commitment. It's a collaboration, right? It's, it's not a one-way street. It's, well, it's both are giving their time, their energy, yeah. their their resources, whether that's money or, or whatever, right? So it, it's really important to, to have that respect and that mutual 
uh, interaction and such. So very cool to to hear that. I think most people would actually like that. Uh, m most people that are committed, right? Because you have to make the distinction. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, very, I mean, very, very nice. Who wants to feel terrible when he goes to his appointment, you know? I mean, it's like you have nothing in common, you have nothing to talk about, then you find out, okay, the guy's into heavy metal, and you say the wrong band, and the connection's killed again, you know? <laughs> I don't know, you just got to keep it going, you know? It's like with, it's and it's it, with every appointment, it's different, right? Because everyone's different. Everyone, the thing is that that was the whole thing that we had when we were sensei in the school, you know? Everyone came from a different country. Everyone has different morals. Everyone has a different mentality. Everyone has different things that are important to them. And one guy has no problem with that. And the other guy has a really big problem with that, you know. And um, I don't know, you know. I, I remember that there was one person when things were talked about like really like one-to-one -one because Sensei would sometimes keep it back, back a bit, but sometimes would have to correct someone, something like that in the group. Maybe. There was one person who left left us because he was quite intimidated about Sensei's background. And it goes to show, you know. And the thing is, yeah, it is like that, you know. And um, here we are doing our best, you know, to keep, to find a third generation. This yeah. is the whole, just to find a third generation. I don't know if it's go back to Japan. I don't know if it stays this. The thing is, I'm just talking generally about it because I know there won't be another podcast interview for me. It's like, why should there be? I've said everything I have to say here, you know. Um, and I'd like to say more, but then probably starts getting nasty, you know. So um, <laughs> the thing is that that sensei was like when you know, like we could talk hours about sensei, but but he was really ethically a really great person, and 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 he taught me that, you know. I think he was a very besides my own dad, I think he was um, the the biggest influence I ever had, you know, to teach me how to be to be a person, you know. Yeah, dude. try and be a bit hearty. Just try and be a bit hearty. You know, you don't have to be all gangster and tough because you only have to be a gangster when you when you have to be a gangster. Yeah. But the rest of the time, you can be a nice guy, you know? Mm. It's, it's very cool. Very cool. And actually, and let me let me ask you this, and I'm, I'm going to say this out. Uh, probably, obviously, if we need to cut it out, that's, that's totally fine. But you brought up a, a very interesting point that's sort of off script. But what about that? The, the third generation, what can you, what can you share yeah. about that if you want to share anything about it? Well, the third generation, I mean, I think it's practically like uh, I was just uh, probably going to Japan more and in touch more with Sensei, you know. I was I was around the house, uh, I don't know, taking care of dog and cat poo, you know, and, and, and doing all sorts of stuff, accompanying to the doctor, having a good time. And I think a lineage just has to carry on, you know. And I think that as difficult as the time may be, and I say that just openly, although it might be a bit delicate but i have a, i have a good imagination that um that's why i said in the beginning when we were talking i said like not everyone's going to be a retired tattooer and i say that because not just because of delivery shortages but the world we live in now guys i think is going to start changing a lot and i think some things are going to get banned again and Man. i made a pledge so my pledge is as hard as if i disappear because of my pledge i made I disappear. I take it straight like that. Um, and to find that third person who has the possibility and is is able to understand what I'm trying to convey to him. I don't know if that guy's 40, if he's already there. I don't know if he's born yet. I don't know if he's in Japan. I don't know if he's a friend of a son of my clients. I don't know if he's my friend. But if someone would come up and is proving himself all the time, asking questions, drawing stuff, what's this, what's that, he automatically starts becoming your scholar. So when you have a scholar, and Sensei taught a lot of people how to tattoo, um, and I, I think that's one of the reasons why I think just, um, you know, a lot of people visited him at his grave that were like, yeah, you know, like a lot of amendments were made in the last six weeks before he died. I really found out a lot of stuff, you know, and 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 um, when someone becomes your scholar, then he's in your lineage. So it's not an automatic thing. I would have to give the title, you know, to yeah. the thing is also there's a, a really th a weird thing with the, with, the, with the generations is there is a certain length of time you have to be tattooing to pass that title on. So I'm clean with it. I tattoo long enough. But what about the person receiving it? Right. So. It's a it's a tight kind of draw, 
you know, um, there are families who have, you know, generation titles and I expect, uh, I don't know, you know, their second and third and fourth generations, man, it's, it's difficult, man, because it's always about like, hey, what are those guys going to say? Why did you do the water like that? You know, because hey. that's their water, you know. You can't just pitch up, like like we said before, you know. It's a disgrace. And I think it's a disgrace if you do that, if you are in a family or if not, or if you have a master or not. There is no way you can do a Tibori school because you are skipping. the. I, th I just think it reflects that your master doesn't have a personality. I think it's just plain stupid because it's a, I flew to Japan multiple times to learn this. And then there's someone who can just buy it for 1,500. Hey, you know what, man? Just contact me. I'll I'll teach anyone for five. And I th I think this is ethically wrong, right? So if you're advertising and doing all this kind of stuff, you just better quit, man. It's just no use, you know. The third generation needs to be on spot. I'm immature. I'm really immature. I'm totally immature because I'm still growing into it. And so would that third generation grow into it. So so would he. But the will to be a real person should be there. Yeah. And if you don't have that will, you're not going to have the power to succeed it, man. That road is a rocky road. You can't get offended every time someone tells you, dude, there is too many scales in that dragon road. You can't be all like, well, I can explain this. You don't have to shut up and just go home and do it again. Yeah, you're not going to the, you're not going to the bioscope this evening. Uh, what do you call it? Cinema. Uh, movies. And yeah. not going to the movies this evening. You can't. The best thing is you just quit the relationship with the woman you're going out with because, or man or whatever, because you need the time to, to school yourself with this. It's addiction. It's truly addiction, you know? And, um, yeah, it is like that. It's, it's, it's everything, you know, for me, it has a very high meaning because I think I probably, if tattooing weren't there at one stage, I probably wouldn't be alive anymore. I can totally say it like that. I know that, you know? And so, yeah, I don't know. Here we are with 50 and finding out how it all works. And then you have it with 60 and with 70, you're in an old age home. And you're going to figure out how it works because you're going to be able to sit at the table with all the architects because they're having the most fun throwing the dice. And you want the same kind of chains like they have because they're all wearing a chain. So all of a sudden you're 70 in an old age home and you want that chain. Like a four-year-old wants a chain. Like a blue, I want a blue bicycle. So it's all about everything. And that, I think that's how it is you know it's we have to be um we have to be obsessed with it we're not obsessed but you have to try and be like you're trying to get somewhere at least yeah, you know yeah. and that's the thing that i liked about L london's interview and um and all the other interviews there is there there are there's always a certain soul to it and i can distinguish between it you know i mean some people yeah. are maybe a bit more shy and everyone comes from a different country mentality but if everyone watches all of these videos, he's going to know quite a bit of stuff. And yeah. that's cool, you know, because it's good for Japanese tattooing. 100%. 100%. Yeah, like you said, discipline, dedication, drive, right? And, you know, some people might think, and I'm, I'm not including myself in this people, but there's all sorts of people. Some people might think, hey, that's just too uptight. That's just too strict. And, you know, yep. what's, what's, what's wrong with this guy? But, but hey, here's a guy who's passionate and respectful of, of his craft, right? That, that's the whole point. If you don't have the passion, you don't have the drive, the discipline, then then don't even bother, right? So it makes a lot of sense that you have all this, all these rules and and you need this discipline and this dedication, right? So, yeah. Hey, the, no, the, you know, I totally agree with you because the thing is, when you look at Japanese, Japanese craftsmanship, like I remember when I was like, sensei, hey, sensei, the lanterns, can I take the lanterns along? He's like, well, if you can transport them, you can take my lanterns along. The thing is, Horishi do have lanterns, right? Because it's like, you know, the festival kind of spirit. Yeah. And everything. But I quickly found out that you can't transport the lanterns at all. Like, they are so old. And so, if you move them, they are going to break. They have to stay there. So I looked at them and I was like, Sensei, he's like, don't touch them. <laughs> <laughs> like, how are we going to are we gonna transport these with feathers? He's like, I don't know how you're going to do it. They're probably going to be broke when they arrive. I said, he says like, how about getting your own ones? So here's him giving me the address of where you go to get your lanterns done. And it's it's far away from his house, you know. And um, so I get off the stop and I look on my Google Maps. It's like, really? There's no bus? I'm walking for three kilometers <laughs> to that place? Nah. And I got the lanterns done. 
And then I'm almost back at the train station to go all the way back. And I'm like, no wonder it was so cheap. I only paid for one. I walked all the way back again. And all the way back again. And I ordered two. And then I went and fetched them two weeks later. Ninth generation lantern making shop. Yeah, man. And they hang wow. in my studio. You know, and since it didn't have like a door divider where you have your your title on. Yeah. So I don't have one either. You know, I can't have everything fancy and you need this because you're already she. You don't need anything. You need the willpower and you need those needles and which ones they are, I can't tell you tonight. But you need willpower and you need the will to try and make it because one thing's for sure. If you're not working out or at least doing your yoga or stretching and you're not having your, you're not on point, it's going to be very difficult and I promise yeah. you, we'll give up. Yeah. And it's all about not giving up. Never give up. Sensei never gave up. Sensei went to to his office to do tattoos to finish his clients instead of getting, going to chemotherapy. No oh, wow. It's crazy. He rather went there to do that instead of going there. That's a long story why that came about, but uh, he, he, he chose that path. He died like a samurai. He died with those samurai ethics. It was crazy. And so a lot of people in Japan... When they when they hear like Horikoi and they they hear Kisaragi, it's uh, they're like, I, I had it also once or twice that people would come to me and say like, could it be true that you're the second generation Kisaragi? I'm like, I, you know, like yeah, yeah, I am, you know. And um, they were always like, oh, that's something, you know. And it's because they they stand for something, and yeah. they all know each other. Don't be mistaken, they don't know each other. Oh man, they all know each other. <laughs> no space for failure, you know. So yeah, got to do it as good as I can so that there's no reflection on Sensei because he's he's watching, you know. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's very 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 powerful. You know, before I go with the with the last question that I that I have for you, I, I do want to make this this comment as as small as it might be. But hey, uh, Gordon and Kisari the the second's Instagram might not be the the most up to date, right? But if you go and you scroll through it, besides looking at his work, you can also see other very respectable Japanese. Tattooers who who acknowledge his craft, his his skills, his his lineage now, right, being the second right now. So it's bits and bobs, you know, but it's yeah. it's it's on there, you know. I think it's better to sometimes show stuff with respect, you know, like when I yeah. I um I post up a picture like saying thank you that I was at Sandra Matsuri, but like I was also then already in Tokyo for two weeks going out with the whole with with all of them, you know. Um, I don't show any people's face, faces, you know. You just don't yeah. you don't show face, faces because the people don't want to be online, right? And um, you don't hashtag certain things, you know. And those are things that, like, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of like bloggers there. Like, when you're at that Sanja Matsuri, the Three Shrine Festival, they're all hanging around there, and there was, you know, you see them on the video walking backwards. And today we're gonna go and see like a whole bunch of them. They, they throw out the word again, and it's like, oh dear, you know. And it's like, I wish they just wouldn't do it, you know. I mean, it's like, if it's a part of like a discussion, I think I suppose it's cool. But as an introduction, it's like. Yeah, well, I think we know what channel is looking professional, which channel is not looking professional, you know. Yeah. And that goes to show, you know, that was also one of the things that Rick said to me. He says, like, yeah, but just go and have a look at the channel. Like, I mean, you know, whatever the whatever is going on in the background, but like the channel's professional, dude. I mean, this is a chance for all of us to, like, you know, get word. Because, like we said earlier on, there's a bunch of Japanese tattooers that are great and no yeah. media coverage. I've said quite a few things tonight that people would probably – say is questionable but I think I take myself out of that lineage because or out of that riga because um, I know a lot of people in Japan and yeah. uh, I don't have to actually worry about things but I'm saying as like I would say it's owed to everyone from Japan who has made bodysuit or horimono or, or whatever who's made that big it doesn't matter where you come from in Japan if you've owed tribute to this culture it's fine but they have a different way of seeing it in japan as we do in the west you know yeah. so of course yeah i have to of course be a bit quiet you know i can't say too many but but i think it was until now it's been fairly okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome all right last question i have for you because we talked about the past we talked about a bit of the present what is next for gordon klaus for kisaragi the second nothing <laughs> uh, the the thing is, I think I want to get better in making needles. Uh, of course, they are looking good. 
There's, there's no doubt about it. They're, they're, they're looking good. But get into that more. You know, make things, I don't know if you can call it about perfection. They call it wabi-zabi in Japan. You know, it's like mm. the imperfection of the perfection. There's no needles spoking out or whatever, but, you know, more sketching, more needles, traveling to Japan more, learning more, going to places that are off the radar, and learning how to conquer the hurdles of life. You know, there's nothing wrong with just doing, where are you going on holiday? It's like, yeah, well, I don't really go on holiday when I'm in Japan, but it's kind of like recreational, but it is also sort of like, yeah, well, I do go and visit people and it's all not just like all just fun, you know? Like some things are obligations, you know, and you go and visit people. I, I, it's fun to go and visit old friends of Sensei. Uh, some people don't want to come and pitch up in the internet, you know. So there's a whole bunch of tattooers you would, you've, we've never even heard about. It's crazy. Yeah. It's completely insane. Never heard of the guy before at all. Never seen one tattoo of him, you know. Like try and find a tattoo from Horibun the second. You just give it all you got. And you're not going to find nothing because there is nothing on the internet. These guys know how to hide. They're brilliant at it, you know. And um, so I go and visit people and they're all very beautiful, loving people. And um, But it's not all, it's, it's recreation, but it's also it's also the occupational. I, I think you understand what I'm trying to get at, right? Yeah. Yeah. But um, there's nothing wrong with just do, being on holiday in your back garden and just taking care of your, of your, of your garden so that the neighbors also have something nice to look at when they will pass your house, you know. Otherwise, don't own a house. Oh, said something. <laughs> Hard work. <laughs> something. I'm just saying, this is what's important, you know, about about life. You know, it's just like work-life balance. I think I have to work more on that because I tend not to take enough time for myself, which has resulted in me having to say to people like, "I'm not doing a tattoo." You know, it, it is just like that. You know, but but it's also sometimes the whole thing. You know, it's it's it. it it would be too difficult to define it into one, you know, if someone's being like all tacky and then he's got like a bunch of old tattoos that are like really poorly done and now he wants you to put something in between it. It's like, maybe I'm not the right guy for that. I love bringing mm. tattoos together, but I'm just not there for everyone, you know? And I mean, those are the hardest chores, like covering up something and trying not to cover it up, you know, and making people happy. I want to keep pe making people happy, but it also does have to have a certain, cer, cer, uh, uh, it has to have a certain, there has to be energy between us yeah. and it just it yeah. has to function. You know, like, like clients um, look for their tattoos, I also look for my clients, you know. And it's it's all about like, yeah, you know, being at the right place. I have like, uh, now a week ago, it was a great news for me, but I'm um, in constant contact with Sensei's clients and one of them would like the second generation to finish the bodysuit. So, I hope that we can, you know, do it, whatever, you know, and, uh, but we have to wait, you know, because we've got that seven year mark. And that's why you see a lot of unfinished bodysuits in Japan is because those people just can't continue to do them, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Well, this, this has been a very enlightening, educational, powerful conversation for Kisaragi the second. Amazing, amazing discussion. I'm sure a lot of people, are going to find this extremely valuable. So thank you very much for, for investing the time here with me. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, so do we. I mean, Lars, Rick, and me, we we appreciate it as well. You know, we, 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 are, we are a fan of the channel. It's it's sounding good. It's it's And I, we thought like, hey, be open, you know. I mean, I'm interested in how it goes on. So I, I do definitely have you uh, in the back. I am already got your channel on, you know, and when something new comes up, I'll watch it, you know. But... um. Uh, the majority of that's a funny thing that a lot of people maybe don't know is like a majority of people who are in this industry a lot of people know each other yeah, in yeah. Japan they keep apart but in the western world like I mean a lot of the people that you you know Yutaro did the top of my head and uh, so you know I gave him a, 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 he, I gave him an extra tip for a nice haircut it's like what are you putting, <laughs> well, you're getting your head done you haven't you got your you aren't shaven I'm like did I, I didn't know that I have to get shaved you know He's like, yeah, well, then I have to do it now. And it took like almost like a whole hour to do it. You know, he was taking, his, making sure he doesn't, you know, break my face. And so it's so like, <laughs> this is going to be the most expensive haircut of all times, you know. So yeah, Yotaro, I watched your interview. It was cool, you know. <laughs> Same with Alex MT in Phoenix, you know. And uh, yeah, visited him, gave me, gave me some tools along. That was a big gesture.
So when I was at Bill's convention in the San Diego Tattoo Invitational, yeah. I actually tattooed someone with Alex's tools. Yeah. Actually, I actually, I for, bro, I forgot to, uh, brother, I forgot to send you the pictures of that. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's going to watch it. Maybe he won't. He'll be surprised, you know. But a uh, great guy. Yeah, fun, fun guy, you know. Gave me a lot of lot of stuff along. And I think that's what it's about, you know, having the trustability in yourself to go visit other holy she and maybe yeah. getting a tattoo from them and and keeping it up, you know, until you're maybe in a lineage where you can't do it anymore. And that's yeah. basically one of the reasons why I don't do it anymore. Except for if I really know someone well in Japan or it's a friend of senseis, I, I can't visit them and I can't mention the name either. It's not possible. Yeah. Because otherwise there is trouble. Yeah. Small things can really become a big problem very quickly. Well, again, I, I'm sure we'll, we'll stay in touch. I'm sure there's a lot of very valuable content, for lack of a better word, that, that the world wants and needs to to hear it and see. So again, thank you, thank you very, very much for, for your time here and, and looking forward to staying in contact. We will. Thank you so much. If you would like to learn more about the world of traditional Japanese tattooing, follow the Waburipedia Instagram page, hit like and subscribe in the YouTube and Spotify channels, and stay tuned for the meanings and stories behind Japanese tattooing, Horishi interviews, and more.